And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. It's a real big show today. Uh, we got a special guest, man, the host with the most. We got Sos the Ghost on. Hey, you see how I did that out of rhyme in Chicago as well, man. Uh, we're going to be talking about a contentious subject right off the bat. See, I'm from Chicago. Go, Danny's from Chicago, so New York, and I say 100%. We got the better pizza, we got the better hot dog, Whoa. but I have to give the pastrami <laughs> sandwiches to souls. Okay, <laughs> but we're gonna be bringing everybody on right now. Uh, while the twos be joining us later, we got Mike Ball as well. He is, uh, I believe, an executive producer or something. Uh, with Demon's Row, but we'll let Sos uh, talk about that as well. But let's get him in here. We got Sos, man. What's up, What's going Sos? On? What's and going then on? we What's got Danny Pedlo over here. What man. up, though? <laughs> Fucking hey, here we go, man. Uh, Sos, how you doing, man? Good, brother. How you gonna say that Chicago got better pizza than New York? We got Little Italy. <laughs> you guys got a Little Italy over there? Yeah, we got Taylor Street, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got a lot of Let me tell you something. We got Cologne, we got Sunny, we got the Bronx Tail right out, right in Little Italy. Come on, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we got Giancano's, we got Rosati's, but uh, I got to give you the first try. that known for pizza? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. That. Really? Really? I, I thought we were starting to get along. Now, now you're going to say we're not known for pizza for real? <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought Chicago was more like Irish. I didn't think it was as Italian. Oh, Is we're that, Italian over here. This, this is kind of both, really. It's like everything, man. I mean, we got Greek town. We got Chinatown. We got Little we Italy, too. Town. We got, man, it's everything, man. That Humble Park is all Puerto Rican, so we got the Puerto Rican food on lock, too. So we good. Okay. We got well, all that good stuff. One thing about New York City, and, you know, people are going to freak out because, you know, I'm a Cubs fan. But at the same time, my American League team is the Yankees. So I guess Yo, uh, there's a yeah. great right there. You want to hear some crazy <laughs> shit? Yo, Hollywood. Um, I grew up a Cubs fan because I played second base. I was shitty, had no arm. So I was playing second base. Yeah, I was trash, bro. My father wasn't around. You know, I didn't grow up with my father. So, but Ryan Sandberg was all star game every year. So I was a big time Cubs fan growing up. I was actually like a Mets Cubs fan. And then, you know, growing up in the Bronx, you eventually go to the Yankees. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You got to. Well, you got to. If you want to even survive, you got to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the Bronx, man. There's a lot of uh, culture that comes out of the Bronx. Uh, hell, we see a lot of movies that come out of the Bronx. And it's a close-knit people from what I hear in the Bronx, the neighborhoods and stuff like that. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, right off the bat, since we're going to get into uh, you know, how MCs and stuff like that need to get along and stuff, is the fact that a lot of the kids that come up, you know, through the gang system and stuff, and eventually in the MCs, they really look for that family unit when parents aren't around. And I think we all experience that type of stuff. So we wanted to get your story on that because uh, you really did, uh, you know, you're king of the hill. As far as uh, content creating, you're kicking ass out there. I better not swear. YouTube would kill us all. Uh, you're really <laughs> killing it business-wise, which is a great story from how you came up. You went through the jail system, prison system, and you made something of yourself where a lot of people give up and go back to the streets. So <laughs> let's hear you up. Um. So basically, you know, I grew up in the Bronx. Um early 80s where you know everything was burnt down they they i don't know if you've seen the interview but they used to call it the burnt down bronx because there was so many when the hustlers would get caught up they would just burn the whole building down so that like the police wouldn't find their work so they would they were literally like crackhead mansions and stuff like that when i lived on 183rd but where i grew up like the cater ave the gun hill area it was just it was rough you know you know how it was in the 80s hollywood like you know oh, yeah. a lot of people think that i'm super super young but you know I was around at that time. I was a baby in the 80s, though. I wasn't like, you know, a grown man. I grew, I really grew up in the 90s. 
but you know New York was rough. You know it was it was rough. It really was. But what Especially what else? Especially with the the crack and stuff was real bad back then. Yeah, like it took it took the crack Man. took my father away when I was four years old. I didn't see my father again until I was twenty eight because he got caught up in the streets, got locked up, killed someone, got out. But you know, back in those days, you could actually get out if you you know if you killed someone. You didn't have to do 25 to life, but he did like a good 23 or something like that. Right. Yeah. And he was just like, he was always messing up and stuff. And then I wound up following in his footsteps because I did, I got locked up from 15 to 17 because when we were young, we were like robbing people. We were, we were so poor that when we wanted like Chinese food, we would like rob the Chinese man. I don't know if y'all did that in, in Chicago. Did y'all rob the Chinese man? Was that oh, hell yeah. Pizza man, Chinese man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. Yep. Can you, you think about it now? Like, imagine like some 14, 15 year old coming up to you and saying, like, yo, give me your shit. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Let me watch my curses. <laughs> I don't want to get you demonetized either. I I used to, uh, I used to deliver pizzas and I, I had to go to the hood, the one that, you know, I was in the hood working in anyway. And I went to the hood and, and what we used to do in Chicago. We would call and order a pizza, like yo, you know, come deliver it to here. And you get to the uh, to the building, and it was an abandoned building. We we'd hit you right there, right out front, right. Yeah. And <laughs> I get there, and it's an abandoned apartment building, and I'm looking at it, and I said, "Man, I know ain't somebody trying to rob me today, bro. <laughs> like you taking a page out of my own book, dog." I got out strapped, ready to roll, right. And the shorties come walking out the gangway. I said, "Man, it ain't gonna be that type of party, shorty." He's like, oh, bro, we didn't even know it was you, dog. Hey, tell somebody else to come back. <laughs> <laughs> how how was, was like, it, uh, though? How was it for you, though, where you knew your dad was, you know, a street guy and he got locked up because he handled his business and stuff? But what void did that leave for you and maybe your mom or grandma or whoever raised you? What void was left from your father going to prison? Well, I, I dealt with abuse from my stepfather, not not like sexual abuse, but like, you know, back in like, I don't know how it was for everybody. But growing up where I'm from, everybody got their ass kicked. It, that's just how oh, it was. Yeah, yeah, that's everywhere. But when it's not really your father and he don't love you, it's different when he kicks your ass. Yeah. So you feel more like, damn, you know, like if my mother hits me, it's like whatever. But, you know, um, yeah, I dealt with a lot of that. And I feel like I feel I think that's why I do Demon's Road, because I never had. <laughs> that guidance like don't do this don't do that because this is you're gonna get caught up if you do that i never had that so i think that's that's kind of what inspired right. me about demon's role you know um mm -hmm. but yeah it was just it was just everything was, that's really you know, cool man I, i'm listen i'll keep it so real like you know a lot of people say oh i never lost a fight in my life you just didn't fight that much but like i grew up learning everything <laughs> Everything i did wrong was an asshole uh, or something went wrong you know getting shot or shooting or something like that. Everything was learned the hard way. And that's why yeah. like I talk the way I do on Demon's Row is because I'm trying to lay it out so people don't get, you know, caught. And I'm not perfect. And there was something that y'all brought up about like um it's in, in Chicago, it's way different. You know what I mean? Like that wouldn't certain things I've said on the show, it wouldn't fly in Chicago. And I was I was even taking it to the extent like you could be in the same state. You know what I'm saying? Like the way I moved in my club wouldn't be the same way another club in my state moved. There's different right. protocol for that club. So basically, I just like to say, like, I tell my story and what I've seen how to move, not like inside club stuff, but just overall moving when you're outside, you know, around different clubs or whatever. Mm -hmm. You said right. your uh, father's out now. Do yeah, you have any out. contact with him? Um, he's in the Bronx still. I, I hardly talk to him because he's so burnt out. Like he never even learned English. So he still speaks Spanish. And when I grew up since, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, like my mother didn't really speak it to me like that. So my, my Spanish is bad. So like I had a girl translating for me and stuff like that. So we're not close. Like I'm not one of those people that like holds anything against him or my mother or anything like that, but we're just not really close. Like we're not in contact like that. My sister sees him, but I'm not one of those people that like thinks about the past all the time and wants to revive that. Right. Right. Now, even right. though you got, you know, you had the kind of an abuse when you were a kid, do you feel like those ass uh, kick-ins actually prepared you 
for the streets and made you more aware of your surroundings and stuff like that and got you to where you wanted to be did it motivate you to be honest with you i think it held me back because i feel like they i feel like my stepfather taught me to be a victim not to be an aggressor so i got bullied so much that it didn't stop until i actually bought a gun and actually had to let it go you know what i mean like it went on for so long so it's like and and yeah. that's kind of how it is when you don't have a father around unless you got big brothers and stuff like that i didn't have that you know what i mean so that's what led me into the gangs and stuff like that was those type of circumstances but all that bullying stuff stopped around like when i came home around 17 it stopped around that time i remember a time where my stepfather actually smacked my sister and i had just came home from lincoln hall that's why i was locked up that's division the division for youth they call it in new york is juvie and um okay. when i came home he smacked my sister i put hands on him like something fierce you know what i mean so after that day i was never you know like i just came home different you know what i mean being locked up being locked up as a kid conditioned me for the streets you know because i went yeah. to like i went to spofford i don't know if you know what that is but in new york spofford is the was the rikers island for when you're a kid you know what i mean so okay. I've, I've been to Rikers Island. I did all that. Like I've been up north. And that's why I say like my channel is more than just talking about 1% life or whatever, because I was a 99 for six years. I was in the clique for six years. I gang banged for 12 years. Oh, yeah. So it's more like what I went through on the streets. So when I'm maneuvering, it's not just, you know, going to a, to a Mongols party or whatever. It's like, I've been the only crip in a blood house up north that type of you know <laughs> how to move when you're that out ain't no fun because it's yeah it, it's crazy in new york bloods run the jails so okay. where i was at in gawanda there's like there was like 10 of us that was crip it was everybody else's blood it was like 60 bloods in the whole jail so it's like you got to be a certain kind of cloth and i always found myself in those underdog kind of situations you know so i think that's what prepared me but I, but I realized like all the, like what Hollywood was saying is like all the mess up stuff that happens, it conditions you, it conditions you for your purpose. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. Now going type of life, was it because you were searching for something to be a part of, or was it something that you were looking for to make up for your father not being there looking for a family? So the way I got in is because my cousin came home. He came home from green. He was locked up. He came home crip. So since I had already had like different situations in the neighborhood where people know who I was, some bloods had chased him out of the park. And this is when bloods really started rising in New York. It was a certain time in the 90s. It was around that time when DMX was popular with Get At Me Dog and all that it started to really yeah. rise in New York and they were doing crazy shit. Like they would, they would ask you what time it is. And then when you would look at your watch, they would cut an old lady, a little girl. They didn't care. They was on that. So my cousin got chased out the park by some bloods and I knew their big homie. So I told them, I pressed their big homie and I told him, listen, this is my cousin. I don't care about the gang shit. This is my cousin. This is family. So when you see him stay, stay away from him. So he respected it. And, None of the Crips had my cousin's back. And people are asking, it was Grave Street. Um, none of the people had my cousin's back that were Crip. He came home from jail with that, and there was nobody else in the set. So instead of, like, when it first happened, I told them, I was like, why are you down with this? And you got beef with people in your neighborhood, but you don't even have a set. None of them are out here. I was stupid, and I did the family thing. Oh, he's my family. He's knuckleheaded. Let me get down with him. I should have steered him out of it but instead i was like he's not going to change and if i'm i started having other situations where i started putting hands on certain bloods in the neighborhood so it's like i'm already labeled as crip and that's my cousin so i'm not going right. to let it happen to him so it just it, it snowballed and then before you know it it was like a long a long time that i was in it you know right so you now, so you figured you figured right. kind of like i did back in the day with the club stuff is you got involved to protect him because you knew you weren't going to stray him away, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. Do you feel like 
you know, we're going to get to the clubs in a minute, but with the gangs, they got a lot more different than even when we went through it. You know, mine, I was real early eighties. It was a lot different compared to your generation in the nineties where it got a little tougher, but now you have stuff out there like in Chicago, you can't even walk on the West or South side. It's shy rock out there. Everybody's yeah. shooting at each other, mm-hmm. but on your side of the you got ms13 which is way wicked out there in the head uh we hear about that all in the news is that something that is actually happening in or is it news hype i think i think overall crime is just up because of everything that's just going on in new york is just it's a it's new york is just a messed up place it's hard to get work there's so many jobs out there but it's hard to get work People get felonies so young that you just can't get work out there. There's so many people no. trying to push for the same jobs that everybody's trying to hustle or do something sneaky to get money. It's just and it's everything is so expensive. You know what I mean? Mm. The worst, no. the worst one bedroom in the worst area is probably like a thousand dollars, you know, in, in a bad area, you know. So it's just everything is just so expensive. Oh yeah, expensive, especially when you talk about uh, housing and stuff like that out by you guys. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So you know, your experiences as a banger led you into looking in and do you believe it's a step up or you know it's not even on the same plane when you get into a motorcycle club? Because I always argue MCs ain't gangs, and regardless of what the news says. It's only a few individuals that do stuff, but you know, we have to face the fact that you know a lot of people that were bangers get into the club, but I think their whole ideology and their thinking changes. Uh, do you feel like it was a step up or, you know, it's just something you want to, you know, get a part of, get a regular family, you know, where they help you out and it did it change your mind thing. I, I think that, it's it's hard to say because I'm not big on rules. I've always had a problem with rules. But um I definitely think that when you're young, I know some people might not like this, but I think the gang shit is the young boy shit. When you get older, you know, you ride and stuff like that. I think I think the, the club shit is more some mm-hmm. grown man shit. You know what I mean? In my opinion, yep. I think it is, you know. But honestly, like I always say this. I stopped getting locked up when I got in the clubs. When I was banging, <laughs> it was in and out. You know what I mean? So um, wow. I think the clubs is a way better option for some young kids to get into, you know? Mm-hmm. I agree. Where do, think, where do you think clubs are missing? Because now we got an average age of maybe 36 to 40. When in the earlier times, when I came in, it was maybe 25 and up. But the younger kids just ain't getting involved. And that's motorcycling in general with getting bikes and stuff. What do you think's going on where younger kids don't want to be involved in any type of organization? Don't have to be a club. It could be like the Moose, Masons, any of that. I think a lot of the young boys is like, basically what they tell me is like, they just, they, they're not filling all the rules and stuff, you know, like clubs got too many rules and they used mm. to just doing what they want to do, you know? I think I think that's a big part of it. Do you think that's from a lack of discipline? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, you know, MCs came from a lot of military people too. And mm-hmm. like where I grew up, there wasn't too many people mm-hmm. going to the military. So I think that's part of it too, you know? Right, right. D- so you like know you what? said, they don't you're have not, the structure, you know. You're on the same level as I am politically, we know, but there was always one thing that I always thought would better, you know, our country as far as the kids are concerned, because other ones do it. But maybe if you're not going to go to college, you do two years in the service. I agree. I agree. That's one of, that's one regret that I have in my life. Shout to, um, six calls MC Jimbo too, because we just did an interview. Um, that's, that's one regret of mine is that I couldn't serve. I got my felony at 19. I had a Navy recruiter. I went through everything. He was ready. He came with me to court. He told the judge, just don't give him a felony. I'll take him right now with me. He did everything he has to do past everything. 
and the judge would not do it. He just gave me the felony. And for some reason at that time, they weren't letting people in with a, with a felony. Right. And that's Where a big regret. Was, that's <laughs> similar. What happened to me, man, I was I like, literally the day I was going to join, I had decided to wait until the end of the weekend. I was going to go in Monday and Friday night, I caught my first felony. And that's, that's what like directed my life <laughs> from there on. Yeah. It's one of my biggest so regrets. We got, too. Uh, Carlos here, uh, my crime partner. How you doing, Carlos? Yeah, we can't hear you, so we'll keep on going. On. <laughs> <laughs> Audio problems. Uh, there you go. You hear me now? Now we can hear you. Uh, yeah. Now we can hear you. Unfortunately, yeah, we hear you. <laughs> We're talking about. Uh, we're talking with Sosa about <laughs> his experiences, how early in life led him to the point where he is today. And like I said earlier, a lot of people that go through his situation, they don't have the drive to go where he's at now. Instead, they fall back onto the streets. And that's what a lot, a lot of people don't, find hope or don't set goals like he did and now he is starting to build a media type of empire if, if you will what's your Carlos? well i mean that's just shows an example that it's not just the regular what people will say because when you leave the streets people think people will fall right back into the streets and i know a lot of guys that were in prison before the mc got into mc and but that's not it, that might have might have changed his derailment a little bit. But him himself had the motivation itself to do what he did. So many people will try to get on YouTube. People love to like they quit their jobs, do things to do something love. But you have to learn the things you hate first to do what you love. And what he probably did, because I mean, if he does, do you do your own editing, all that shit? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I always told people, I go, man, he does his thing no matter what. I mean, he puts awesome thumbnails, awesome editing. He has a great entertainment program itself uh, for viewers and for people to actually see. But he stepped it up. I mean, you have a lot of YouTubers that complain in self and don't know what are their numbers. That you put in the work. The result is the work that you put in. Mm -hmm. And it oh, just shows wow. an example that you can use your mind no matter where you come from where you've been and utilize any weaknesses or strength to come out ahead to help yourself in the future. Either you fall back or you don't. I mean, there, there's no one else is going to help you out in this life than yourself. You can put the tools in front of you, but if you're not going to do anything, I mean, I mean, there's plenty of people, they have the opportunity. You give them a million dollars, they'll blow it quick, but you give the yeah. right person the million dollars, they'll triple that. So, I mean, that just shows a testament to him itself. And it shows that, hey, just because just you come from the street, wherever you come, you're not an idiot. I mean, you don't have to have a degree to be smart. I mean, there's a lot of plenty of book smart people that can't do shit with no common sense. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the main things. Where did your Thank drive you, come from, Sos? Where did your drive to say, you know what? I'm going to make this. I'm going to be something. I'm going to make demons ro ro uh, worldwide known. Did, where did that come from? Did it come from the heart where a lot of successful people go to to make it happen, their drive, and just saying, hey, wait a second, you know, I'm not going to let this keep me down or that keep me down. I'm going to make my own future. So this is a good way to answer the question about the Holy Grail of MC culture, too, like why I call it that. Because I know some people think like that don't know me. They think Holy Grail of MC culture. He thinks he's better than everybody, stuff like that. And when I say the Holy Grail, it's like I bring up these topics and then we all get together and talk about it. And there's stuff that I've learned, you know what I mean, from everybody, you know. And we all come to this conclusion. Like I know stuff now that I didn't know a couple of years ago. You know, you could learn from anybody. So I say that to say that like I've always been into like Templars and 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 like roman the roman empire and it's for me it's always been about legacy like where where do i see myself when 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 it's all said and done where do i want to sit and i want to sit on a, in a legendary space and i've always thought that since a kid like it's about like when we grew up it was about getting your name up that was always you know like in the gangs it was, yeah. you know, I, I hate to refer back to it because i know a lot of people 
you know, don't like it, but it was like, you know, you put in work so that people know who you are. Your name rings bells. And that's how we grew up in New York. It was all about making your name known, you know? So I don't know. I just always had that thing about wanting to have a legacy that I leave. And when I'm gone, I have this legacy, you know, I don't know why, but I've always had it. Now, do you have uh, children? Because I felt yeah. personally, if I'm going to achieve, I want to do it. It's more for them than it was for me. And yeah. they are such an inspiration to make you want to do better. To be honest with you, like, like my, my, um, legacy is, is a selfish thing. And I, and I'm, I'm a very honest person, a transparent person. I want to leave my stamp here and then leave the kids with the business. You know what I mean? Like, but I want them to be whatever they believe they can be. I want to show them that it's not about school or whatever. Like, I feel like what you guys do, what I do is the true path. Cause we do what we love at the end of the day. So you're a success if you do that, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, if you can make right. a living off of it, you're a success. So it's just like, how far do you want to take it, you know? In, in my opinion, you uh -huh. know? Yeah. Well, right. That's something, that I agree. Robert, I that's, agree. that's something that Robert Kiyosaki used to say. There's those that were bred to work, and then there's those that were bred to take on the world on their own and be entrepreneurs and make their path the way they wanted to make that path. Yeah. And you're doing that right now. You, you know, you, you got, you're on all media platforms. You got a podcast coming up. Uh, you just got so much on your plate where you're saying, okay, I'll use time management and we're going to go here. We're going to go there and I'm going to make my dent there. And that's what I respect right there. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. I feel I feel like you're doing the same thing. You know, you you've been rocking with the podcast. You know, you're more heavy on that side. You know, I I feel like you're doing the same thing. You know, and our stuff. I, like I said, it was always a, like a competition. You know what I mean? But it was never malicious. And like I say it in front of everybody. Like when I was on the come up, the only one who gave me a look was Hollywood. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm here right now. Like I don't forget oh. when people do stuff for me. You know what I mean? That's what that's why i'm here too <laughs> well you gotta you gotta remember though competition nothing's wrong with competition i mean you need competition that's how people yeah. step up their game yeah i yeah. mean if, yeah. if it wasn't for hollywood probably you wouldn't step as much and if it wasn't for your step up other people probably would want to step up either yeah. i mean no one can I, talk i mean i mean it's seriously i mean you can say holy grail of course i can be personally like what the fuck you know i don't want to curse but you know what does he mean but then of course when you explain things overall when you actually just take a step back and just forget about the bullshit Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you. I mean, everybody does their thing. Whatever you need to succeed to a point, you're gonna do. You know. One thing I want to say too, uh -huh. um, on the Holy Grail thing is like, I don't like. I'm big into marketing, so yeah. like, I'm. I wanted to market the Templars since I'm a big fan of the Templars. I wanted to market that, so it's more of a marketing strategy than an actual. Yeah. I think I'm better than you know. I think I'm better than everybody type of deal, and I, I think this is a good platform to say it because people might not perceive it that way. They might perceive it in a different way, like you're saying, you know. Yeah, and that's not right. what it means, you know. Yeah, I mean, and well, and that's the thing that uh, sorry, to, I was just to finish up here. Like, like me personally, I, that's the way I took it originally. Of course, when you say that, but I kind of figured myself. I'm a, I'm a business guy outside of YouTube. And marketing and branding is the number one thing. If you can market and brand it with a catchphrase that someone is always going to say or say, I mean, that's that's coin in itself. So it's right. It's like, well, I'm a, I'm a, no. okay, I don't want to cut you off. No, go ahead. So like I I grew up, I grew up on Wu-Tang. Reza is one of my, you know, OGs. Reza, everything about the Wu-Tang was like karate this, karate that. So I chose my lane to be like Templars, bike stuff. So that that was the influence, you know. He's not saying that I'm a I'm a black belt and I'm better than everybody and I'll kick every other, you know, rapper's ass or whatever. It was a it was a marketing strategy. So I want people to understand that when they hit a holy grail, it's about marketing, not about, you know, like just thinking you're better than everybody or whatever. That's not what it's about. Well, that's the thing. Right. It is about marketing and everybody uh along well, with Danny, he asked me uh about his store. I was like, man. We have a thing where you got to say it over and over and over again to get it into people's heads for the yeah. radio advertising and stuff like that. And that's all. That's what you're doing is marketing because this is a business. 
And when Twitch went after you, that that right there broke me. I was like, dude, you, you know what? Now you're just not disagreeing. You're not, you know, trying to make a point. Now you're going after the guy's business. And that set me off. I was like, oh, hell no, man. This guy's put in a lot of work. And, you know, it's entertainment when we go back and forth. To me, it is anyway. I like joking yeah. around. But when you go after somebody in a vindictive manner, that I just can't take. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like he came at he came in in a disrespectful way. Like if if you're gonna come like that, don't do it on the internet. Do it when you see me in person. You know what I mean? Like, why would you go on the internet? Like, anytime you guys ever like disagreed on anything, it was like you were laying down facts that you believe that you didn't like something I did or whatever. I don't care about shit like that. It's competition. But once you're like, you're a punk, you're this, you're that, it's like, come on, bro. Why are you saying on the internet? Like, who does that? Right. Tell me when you see me in person. It's a small world. <laughs> Tell me when you yeah. see me in person. That's it. Yeah. That's how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm going to fold him when I see him in person, though. That's a fact. Rock on. I mean, the guys that know me, even Dan, I tell Danny all the time, I mean, uh, if I ever have an issue, I, literally, I would have called you straight up if I had a real issue with you. For, before I post anything on the internet, before that, I would talk yeah. you straight up and say, hey, I don't, you know, and I'll just either talk trash or what to a, a, a certain way, but I'd rather do that to someone directly than rather go on, you know, on, on the computer and just post something kind of off the off the hip. Yeah, uh, and, and you got to think about it while, like, I never met nobody in person. So everybody that's saying whatever about me, they never met me in their life, you know? Yeah. So this dude to jump uh-huh. in and be like, you're a punk, you're this, you're that. Like, you don't even know me. You never met me in your life. I didn't even know who he was. Yeah. So it's like, it was just weird. It's just weird shit. Well, I don't think any of us really knew who he was until he popped up out of nowhere. I, I didn't know. Well, I do know he's not on the internet anymore, but <laughs> he hasn't posted anyway. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the biggest thing, though. I always um, said I, I would rather have all this in person, right? I'd rather get in yeah. front of everybody with everybody live and do it in person if I had the chance. That, that was yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Where we gotta go did... to the Cubs game, Hollywood. We oh, got, I'll I take gotta We got to go to the Cubs, bro. Hey, so, man, you can't say the Cubs or anything with uh, my old lady. <laughs> She's a diehard Cubs fan. and she Oh, yeah? Out. Oh, my God. Wow. I Dude, took her I'll to the game this past uh, summer. But yeah. she, you can't play with her, man. She no joke. Danny knows. Well, we're all <laughs> jumping in the plane with Carlos. And... <laughs> Goddamn right. Going to so a Cubs game. Doing Demon's Row, you were just starting out. What did you think you needed to do to grow to where you are now? Was it the marketing? Was it the editing? Because uh, your editing's kicking. Uh, Thank you. I started yeah. with hip hop videos. That's why I'm good at editing. Like I used to shoot. I don't. I know you guys probably don't know, but like French Montana, he he's a pretty known artist. I used to shoot for his team, the Coke Boys. And yeah, you know, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah, I know you knew. But um, I used to shoot for the Coke Boys, so I actually had experience shooting videos and editing oh, and stuff wow. like that. So when I stepped in, I knew a little something. I never went to school or anything, but I yo honestly Hollywood, I just watched tutorials, bro. I just keep educating myself. That's all I do. I think it. I think that's the key is just uh, keep learning. You know, I research everything. YouTube is a beautiful thing. Same way everybody come on here and try to learn something from us. There's they. You can learn stuff about everything. Editing, yeah. lighting, cameras. You know, that's how I learned it all. You yeah. know, well, it's like Elon Musk that's, said. I mean, you can learn anything in education online. You can if you want to learn history, learn it online. If you want to learn how to do math, you can do anything online. You don't like degrees. Technically, is a uh, semantics. Yeah, learn more. Yeah, on computer. Right, yeah. right. Well, you were talking. <laughs> you guys were talking about that music. I'm sitting here thinking, man, I am. I only know David Allen Coe and all the old guys. <laughs> well, whatever. Now I, I was going to just crack on a Puerto Rican that don't speak Spanish, man. That, that, but New Yorkers are like that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my boy Cowboy, he, he's he was with a big club out in the Bronx and stuff, and then uh, but he he speaks eh, a little, you know, a little Spanish, but. Yo, let me tell you something. Know, while when I was, I hated it because when I was locked up, I was since I was since I was crip, I couldn't. The Puerto Ricans were scared to chill with me. I used to chill with the Jamaicans because the Jamaicans <laughs> were crip. So I had to sit there and listen to them speak in their language 
the whole time. I don't understand nothing they're saying. So I started chilling with the Dominicans. <laughs> the Dominicans wasn't scared of the Bloods. And they were speaking straight up Spanish. So I'm just there like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just crazy. <laughs> the, the worst part is, like, we all go out somewhere together. They'll be speaking Spanish to you guys there, Danny. And you. then I'm the one, I'm the, like the whitest looking person here with Hollywood. And I'm the, hey, you I'm the one that knows Spanish. And that's my first language is Spanish. How has this changed you, man? How has it changed you as a person? You know, you, everybody knows if you're to make it, you got to have the thick skin. But how have you dealt with the success? Um, that's a, that's a great question, man. I don't know. I just, I just keep working, you know, and just keep trying to grow. That's basically it. You know, like I just try to get better and learn more and just like, what am I doing wrong? And then I just really try to listen to the audience. Like, what do they want? And it's, it sucks, man, because I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. What they want is what Hollywood's giving them. They want to hear Hell's Angels, Mongols, Vagos, you know what I mean? They want to hear the juicy shit, you know? So I, I try to be creative as possible without doing it. It's rough, man. It's rough. It's a small niche that we're in. So it's like, it's hard. And you, we, you, yeah. Hollywood, you know what they want because you give it to them all day. So, mm, yeah. Uh, and that, it, and you know what? Yeah. That's a sad part of society and whole is they rather hear about somebody killing this one or killing that one instead of sitting back and say, okay, you know, what Sosa's is doing or what Danny's doing, you know, this is good for the community. You know, it's funny. I get to look at the analytics all you guys do because when I retooled the show, I was like, okay, let's put some good that does. But all you see is the clicks forward in the chapters to where all the bad's at. Yeah. Oh, guaranteed. I look at my video. Video as a whole. When I started a year ago, my fir my first videos were popping off. I don't, I don't put I never put club names in any of my videos. Not one club name. Not one person has I ever named. So I don't get the views like I could if I just put like literally, you know, like Hell's Angels, you know, anything big with a you know cuts on there. So I just don't. It is something I like. I said I have a different view on it in general. So that you can see the reflection. Yeah. Have y'all ever I'll noticed? I, no, I, I never mentioned that. a club name. Yeah, yeah right. That. Well, that's uh, I, you know what? Only one time yeah, I mentioned the club I think it's name, hard but... because to be honest with you, like me and Hollywood get hit up directly by clubs, like yo, listen, can you talk about this? So sometimes yep. it's like it's big homies that's hitting us. I, I gotta say the right way, presidents and stuff like that, because I still have my <laughs> you know right. wrong um terminology or whatever. But it's like it's certain uh presidents and high ranking members that are like, yo. This just got spent in the media and they, they're not giving it the right justice. Can you say something about this? So we deal with me and Hollywood deal with that a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, but it's only so much you can talk to about also online and the creative part gets really, that's when it gets tough. You know, yeah. it's, you have yeah. to get really creative what you want to talk about. Now you're on yeah. the East coast and I watched as you went to the West coast. What's the scene difference between, and I know the Midwest is like in Yahoo land, but you know, me and Danny talk about it all the time. It's like, damn, we go to a bike night and it's all hairy old ass people, but you go yeah, out to the yeah, West yeah. coast, you got some babes. Yeah, then you go on the West coast, man. They got bad females, badass bikes, good music. Everybody having a good time yeah. Yeah. out here. Yeah, it's I like a, a bike night out here. It's a bunch of support clubs, a couple of dominant dudes. And a bunch of ugly ass women with ugly ass bikes just hanging out at a bar. That's what a bike night is. Yeah, <laughs> it's sad. I, I love California. I'll be honest with you. Like, is the women are all beautiful? The there's so many clubs. There's, it feels like there's like a million clubs out there, but they all respect the big bros out there. Like, they don't play with them. But it's it's just I don't know, man. I right. feel like where we're from, I feel like the nicest bike is like regular compared to california like they do the most like well, they, they do their bikes up. are amazing it's it's, it's art like cars. You know? yeah even yeah like the low riders yeah. and all that it's just i don't know man i love it out there it's just so expensive i was gonna move out there but it's just so expensive you know mm. do you ever but think about vegas yeah it's super expensive I was to live thinking out there about that. it's funny that you brought that up yeah i was thinking about that today what do you even what do you think about what do you think about there <laughs> yeah. my, my boat's always Miami. Just to right. throw it in there. Just to throw. You it know in. what it is about Florida? Florida is too muggy. 
I would be upset all the time. Uh, I can't not me, man. Happy. There's a bunch of titties all around with no shirts <laughs> yeah. on and um and all the Hispanic women. It's so like, humid though, man. No. How is your reception? The women are bad in Florida though. They're definitely bad in Florida. How is your reception out on the West Coast? More love than on the East Coast. More love. It's really insane. Yeah, well, I, I think that makes sense. Even, I could I couldn't I, I didn't even like Mike. You know what it is? It's like Mike, the people that you know, without saying too much, the people that he knows are so high up that like when we're moving around, it's like it's just so much love. Like everywhere we went, it was like it was amazing. Like I couldn't I couldn't even believe it. Like I didn't realize the reach of the show and stuff like that. It's just more I guess because the scene is just so much bigger, like where where we live, it gets cold. So less people really, really, really ride like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you think right, sometimes man. like you're only uh, – it's like um, people that you're closest with are the ones that actually want to see you fail. You know how that – there's a, a weird saying like that. So like kind of the East Coast. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just like when you work somewhere. If you ever work somewhere, let's say you went – let's say you – all your life you grew up somewhere. You are a little kid that was working hard in a little grocery store. Then you became the manager. But everybody that works there always sees you as that little kid that work yeah. there they don't really see you moving up in that area until you go somewhere new that no one sees you yeah so it's kind of similar yeah. yeah i mean i feel like in new york it's a lot of love but it's new york is very new york is very anti-social so they're not gonna show you the maximum love california is just so much more i don't know like how to explain it it's just they they don't mind give, showing you love new york everybody's too cool to really like you know, like, oh, yeah, I rock with your show, much love. But, you know, in Cali, they'll tell you, like, yo, we love you out here. Like, it's just different, you know? Yeah, in New York, man, they, you know, you pass them wrong, they give you the finger, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, let me tell you something, Hollywood. Like, I would know, I always tell people this. Like, where I grew up on Decatur, I would know people's first and last names. And we would walk right by each other, not say shit to each other for <laughs> our whole lives. <laughs> like that's how New York is. Like you can know. Uh, I would know. Like I walk by this certain girl. She, I know her brother, father's name, everybody, and I would never say none to her. She would never say none to me. We just walk by each other. It was the Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. <laughs> okay, you, so, so I was gonna say, if you can do anything all over again, looking <laughs> back through your journey, like uh, from YouTube itself, what would it be? And do you have any regrets or some redos, if you would? If, as far as just YouTube or in life, yeah, just YouTube creator, not not life in general. Because usually, I can't really actually what you went through in life was what got you today. So there shouldn't be regret yeah. to that. Because uh, no matter what, you don't we don't have a crystal ball, so there's no way to see how even if you changed what you did, you know, wrong. But whatever you did brought you to where you are today. But from YouTube, I meant. I feel like I feel like your mistakes are what makes you. So I'm starting to learn that like you learn more through your L's. So when bad things happen, it's to prepare you for the next level. So I, I wouldn't really change anything because if I do, then maybe I wouldn't mm -hmm. be on my path. You know, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as like, let me think on YouTube. Um, one thing I would have did as far as like all the stuff that was going on between me and Hollywood, I would have just called if I if I could rewind time, I would have just hit up Hollywood like. Yo, listen, bro, you you had my back when I was on the come up. This is little, you know, YouTube shit or whatever. And I think we just let it fester a little bit too much, you know, and then it became a whole mob of people that like, you know, were against me or whatever. But that's one thing I would change because me and Hollywood always was every time we ever talked, it was like we were good, you know, and he showed love. So I think that's one thing that I would have did as far as the YouTube or whatever. Yeah, sometimes that's the that. quickest way to get over something is actually just hit yeah. straight on. Yeah, yeah, just people talking, and he takes that experience of that issues with us. It's on a minor deal with YouTube, but now that you know the name of the show is Peace on the Streets, Time to Unite, which is a big one, that kind of stuff that we were going through can start wars at that point on the streets and on, you know, in clubs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that subject, you got to interview somebody that is actually in my mind all the time. I believe he got a raw setup. Uh, we talk a lot and that's Freddie. 
What do you think of that oh, case? Yeah. I I I believe Freddie. Like I talk to Freddie, free Freddie Agello. Um, I speak to him all the time, and um, he's just solid. Like if he if he did it, he's already doing twenty five to life plus thirty. If he really did it, he would just be like, I did it. You know what I mean? He really sure. didn't do it. They set him up because you know he's a pagan. It, it looks good, you know. And he was actually not even in the club at the time when it happened. He was retired. They just yeah. dragged the club into it, and they always do that. I think well, that, I think that the dude killed his wife because she was going to take him for all his money. And, and they put, you know, it was a sexy headline, in my opinion. Mm. No, I believe that 100%. 100%. Yeah. Because they got him just six too years much later. of a hippie for me to do something like that. Yeah. They got him six years later. Mm -hmm. With no real evidence. People just ratting on him, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. So I want you guys to remember out oh. there, Freddie, man. Freddie needs the, his case, uh, you know, going through all the appeals and stuff like that. Uh, they did doctor's orders on Discovery Plus, and I think that's important for them to be able to get their side of the story out. But I don't believe it. Freddie's too much of a hippie, uh, down-to-earth guy. And you usually can tell just by looking at somebody if they were involved in something like that. I think it was a setup. But leading to that, talking about setups, we cover it all the time on Biker News, how the media throws one type of, uh, you know, propaganda out. And it's usually a police propaganda because let's admit it, the media, they make tons of monies off of bikers, man. Yeah. You know, that's where you had the SOA, the Mayans, uh, all that type of stuff, because bikers make you a lot of money. And I think no. that. Clubs are always put in that regard, so the money is put out there. What do you, you know, you got a movement going on. You got your patch on your hat right now. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the patch and where you want to go with this. I just want it to be the type of thing where it's like, if you if you see it, you you will understand that, like, they want the same thing. Like, right now, we're in a situation where, they actually told us you have to stay home and you can't come outside. People lost their businesses. Like if we can't be on the same page, like I, I want to live in a world where like truckers, truckers, bikers are like in connection with each other. And there's like some type of network. Everybody doesn't have to hold hands and be best friends. But at the end of the day, if they say there's something new that came along. I want to do it without, you know, getting you shut off because certain things that I say gets me demonetized and I don't want to get your video demonetized. But if they turn around and say, you know what, somebody, a lot of people are catching the sniffles. Let's just say it like that. Everybody has to stay <laughs> home. Do you know how many people are going to lose their businesses? So at well, least if we're in tune with each other, we could say, nah, we're not doing it. We could turn it into jaywalking. You know, that's basically my goal is is a is a larger goal it's a country goal not not a i i realize that clubs are not gonna squash a lot of beefs like i i got big brothers that are like it'll never happen and i'm to the point where it's like if there's if there's i don't know how many hollywood how many clubs do you you know like numbers wise how many you think independence there are how many club members oh, you're looking at united the, states it's actually independence just roll over you know the clubs you know i think the clubs are maybe two to three percent of the the biker population and that has to do with a lot of stuff us dumb old people did uh, in the day uh where right. you guys are more like okay man you know what enough's enough we don't even know why this started you know like a lot of these people don't know how the big one started it was all over women Mm -hmm. But yeah, independence, they outrank everything. They're the biggest. Yeah. So what if what if like 92% of the people all were like at least in tune to the point where if they're like, you know, like something happens and let's let's talk about I'm trying to say it in a way where, where you don't get demonetized. Um because they, have they, they, they have they been hitting you on your Antifa you. stuff yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like <laughs> they hit me all the time. I'm gonna, say, I, I, I'm gonna say it on a small level. On a small level, I want to live in a world where Hollywood is like, I got a, um, me and D Lo got an event 
in Chicago and we're like, we put the blast out and everybody goes over there and then the money right. goes to Hollywood or something happens to a kid and the whole community comes together and helps that kid or whatever, you know, stuff like that. And, and on right. a larger level too. But just that type of situation where you don't even have to be in a club or you could be in a club and be down with it, you know, because I have brothers that are in clubs that are down <coughs> with it. But it's just like, it's only but kind of so kind of like being way. a mason, right? Kind of, kind of. Yeah, but, in, the, in that in that realm. But it's just it's how long are we gonna do the same thing? And and I feel like, to be honest, like I feel like the way the format is going, we're going into a new era. You know what I mean? These younger kids don't care yeah. about what was going on 50, 60 years ago. So we're going into a new era. Things nope. change. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I feel like we're at that point where maybe we could usher in something that we have control over that's something positive and push people in that direction that may want to get in the club but don't want to deal with the politics, you know? Right. I, I think that there's another way to do yeah. it. And if you think out the box, we could do that without all the rules and the mandatory this and you got to go to this state, you know, when you got to work and, you know, that type of stuff without <laughs> any of that. You know, I think be, and and you look at the independents; they they ride more than the clubs half the time. You know what I yeah, mean? Like right half the time. Yeah. More. <laughs> well, to be real, was, you know? they do. There was there was two times in recent years where all the clubs actually got together, and it was a sight to see. And the anniversaries coming up uh, in May for Twin Peaks Waco. Uh, Popeye and OG from Texas Biker Radio, they really led a movement where all bikers, clubs, confederations got together, got rid of that damn prosecutor who overstepped his reach. And the other incident was the New Hampshire 7, you know, with the jarheads when they lost uh, yeah. their people. So it is possible, you know, it yeah. really yep. is possible yep. to happen. Yeah, that's 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 why I, I, I talk about peace on the streets, because, you know, like Sosa said, and I've been saying it all along, you know, clubs are not going to hold hands and sing Kumbaya, you know, all the beefs and, and some of the guys to hold on to that crap. And I, and I get it. I, I respect it. Freddy, Freddy's but there's no <laughs> there's I don't know no, how he did it, but Freddie's on a live right now. Not to cut you. Is he? Oh, Freddy's Free on the Freddy, live. Baby. Freddy. He said, he said Free Freddy. Hollywood for putting the truth out there. Hopefully get a good civil attorney and start. It's cut off. People like the doctors, orders, producers, and BS presented as truth. Yeah, he has he has a channel that he used to do his music on. And somehow, I don't know how they do it, but I've been talking to him through the JPay and stuff like that. So yeah. I think he has somebody that like has it playing for him. And then he'll say, yo, tell Hollywood and so's this or whatever, you know? Right, yeah. right. I really believe in his cause. I really do. <laughs> Yeah. And it's something like he's going through right now or right now. some of these other trials off. that are hey, happening on, as far as we now. go that's going on right now that people do need to unite. I don't and we anything. learned that from the Vago. Well, my, my camera. Oh, I'll put him out here a sec. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we learned that from the Vagos in Las Vegas when they stuck together and they uh -huh. beat government with this rico stuff now yeah. rico wasn't uh, originally intended for organized crime like the outfit the syndicate or the mafia for you guys i keep on giving chicago terms but it was used for that but then bikers they seen were like okay they're a strong group there are a lot of veterans in there we don't like it we get nervous about it so let's go after them for every little thing and when you see these rico cases it's like, okay, we're not going to put on tinfoil hats. Yeah, you know, nobody's uh, Boy Scouts. But five people, you're going to say, represents a whole motorcycle club <laughs> where they're working nine to five or working 13, 14 hours a day. The whole club ain't a gang. Mm -hmm. right. And I really wish, and Sosa know what I'm talking about because he's from New York. I really wish that clubs, the bigger ones, would form a commission-like type of deal because there is motivation to stick together just like they did in Twin Peaks and New Hampshire yeah. to get it together. Yeah. I, I think like most of the um most of the sets are like 
split into two. So I think it's possible that if in the future, like when major stuff goes on, because, you know, y'all know, like I'll be on a politic tip too. And there's like, there's a lot going on in the country right now, you know, that people don't know. Right. So it's like, I, I, I want to talk about deeper stuff. That's the only thing I hate about YouTube Hollywood. It's like you can't really say certain things, yo. I, I hate it, man. But right, a lot of people in the I see a lot of people saying that they're glad that us three like linked up. It, it feels right too, you know, like our vibe. Oh, yeah, it, it does. Sense, you know what I mean? It definitely does make sense. Well, you need it to get the your bit shoot and uh, your Odyssey. That's where I talk a lot of or Rumble. Rumble's real good for that too. Yeah. Uh, but that's why I started that online radio station is because I got sick of not being able to say what I wanted to say on YouTube and Facebook and in Instagram and uh, TikTok. I get taken down all the time and I don't even know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, yes. Man, don't even get me started on TikTok, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm on my third page. I should have like 3 million freaking followers on there by now, man. But I got 18. Instagram, Instagram like, come on, man. Worse, man. I'm getting taken down on Instagram all the time, and I didn't even know what I did. Uh, I'm not on Instagram much. I don't, I don't really post much. That we do got to unite because they're, it's dangerous. And the club stuff aside, man, the biker stuff aside, it's dangerous yeah. as American citizens when you have that type Ugh. of censorship going on. Hey, could you hear yeah. me now? There you go. Sorry yeah, about we, that. That's what happens when you have Yeah, we dog. can see you, too. We're not looking at your ceiling. <laughs> My damn dog got in here and just ripped all through the cords, and yeah. Blame the dog. He wanted, yeah. he want, he want to speak his piece. <laughs> he want to speak his piece. Man. Yeah, like, right. I, he smells uh, Danny D'Lo's toes. He's like, man, I got to get on this. I just want to say about uh, <laughs> uh, about unity itself, a lot of times that we have to remember that it's, it's going to be impossible to – we have to know – I made a video the other day that a divided culture needs a united church uh, and a divided nation needs a united united people just to know that you can't win them all. We're not going to win everybody. And then you got to start with the core. If you start with the core, not the crowd, you're going to be well, well off, way better off. And you got to do the math like we're doing the math about percentages of what's the percentage that are in clubs, not in clubs. What's the percentages of people that are actually the disconnect with the new generation, with the old generation. And then you got to focus on what you agree on, not what you disagree. You can't yeah. explain why twice as much as you can explain what the, the what and the how. So, yeah. uh, you know, the solutions are better than giving like when you hear people always talking about we're going to be running circles. That's what we've been doing. Right. Yeah. And then the way society is now, if there's not a tragedy, just like if there's a hurricane that just destroys like Houston, like or Louisiana, everybody got together there. There were, uh, I don't people that hated each other, helped each other. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping that it doesn't get to a point that it gets so bad that we're going to have to do something similar. Um, yeah. so that's why as long as you start with the core and that's what right now, what you guys are doing is kind of starting more with the core and working out compared to yeah. trying to wrangle, you know, wrangle everybody through. Yeah. More of an idea, you know, like, but I, I really do believe that things change. I know a lot of people always think that like, realistically, like, I, I think the Romans thought the same thing. Like they would be on top forever. No, but nothing lasts forever. And people got to realize that, you know, times change. Mm -hmm. You know, so I know we're we're very entrenched into the biker world, but I feel like I've lived outside of that and inside of it. And I see that you can always evolve and do something different, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be taking questions yep. later on, uh, everybody. But I wanted to continue on this conversation of. You're doing a lot more intense type of subjects on your channel and one thing that does get me is when we do talk about them type of subjects that are intense what's going on in this country uh for one because it's very important to talk about you get yeah. people that comes back and says well i thought you guys were a biker channel well wait but a why second. are they trying to put us in a box though hollywood that's putting us in a box like you're a dumb biker and that's all you could talk about like don't put me in that box you know what I mean? That's how I feel. You know, right? Yeah. Why do you? Think why I try is? to talk about a little something different. Why do you think that is, Carlos? Where we're no, we're American citizens. We need to work to. Get, we're a big voting block, man. The bikers. We've seen that in Texas. Well, yeah. we need to know the issues, but they'd rather see me talking about okay this guy killed this guy or this guy instead of saying, "Well, wait a second. Like so said earlier. 
we were locked down and people lost their damn businesses. A lot of bikers lost their own businesses too. Yeah. Well, a lot they of hear when, about that stuff. You, you get the from old movies that people watched or the old tales of uh, back in the day. The clubs had what people. A lot of people didn't have jobs. A lot of MCs in the beginning didn't have jobs. They came out of the war, didn't have jobs. They looked for guys that they kind of couldn't field together with, and they kind of helped each other out. But now it's different. There's uh, lawyers, doctors, there's uh, truckers, there's uh, pipe layers, there's everything uh, right now in the MC community. And people are pilots. People are, you know, like I said, there's there's everything there. But people like living on the old stigma. Just like uh, a, if you see a biker wearing um, either baggy pants or tight pants, and someone will say, "Oh, you're not a real bag. You're not a real biker. You look too ghetto. You or you're not a real biker. You look like I don't know, like two from I don't know from Austin, Texas." I um, but I think it's just more what people, that's why they like the TV stuff. All the, if anything bad that you put, the titles, they'll like it. They're going to watch it because that's what they like. That's what they grew up on, on the movies and shows. But in reality, yeah. though, a lot of people, a lot of communities, bike bikers itself run the communities. There's a, here in Texas, there's actually like, I think a, a mayor of a town that is a biker uh, yeah. in an MC. That's so, why, like, I don't know if you noticed, but like whenever I like touch on like something in the news, I try to expose how, like, let's say whatever topic, you know, the pagans, whatever. I try to, like, talk about the fact that, like, it'll be, like, one pagan that got caught up. He was doing something, hustling, whatever he's doing, and they make it seem like it's a club, you know, conspiracy. Oh, they're, they're a yeah. criminal enterprise. You know, that that's not the way it works, you know? I, I really, like, you guys know, like, You'll have a brother that hustles or whatever, but it's not a criminal organization where, like, it's like Sons of Anarchy. You sit at the table and they're like, let's hit this truck and stuff like that. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that, like, stuff like that doesn't happen, right. you know, but overall, the consensus of clubs, it's not the way it is, you know? Well, that's kind of, you brought up a damn good point right there, a freaking damn good point. During Freddie's trial, it wasn't about Freddie. It was all about some incidences. They put the club on trial to convict him. Mm. And that's something we need to be very rare. You know, they've been doing it all over the East Coast because I've been covering it to the pagans. Uh, but that's the thing that they do. They use the trial at hand to go after the club. And one of the things I always said and, you know, the old uh, guys that I learned under as a kid, you know, my uh, great uncle, he's, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> they use that summation, which means when you plead guilty, you got to say, yeah, I did this, I'm part of this and this and this. The summation is the most damaging part of a trial because now you're saying, okay, the club's a criminal gang when they're not. And they, it, and the thing the thing with Freddie too is that they had a whole um TV special out painting him as a monster before he sat in front of the jury. Like exactly any good lawyer uh -huh. would get that thrown out, you know what I mean? Because of that in itself. Exactly. And that's one thing that in biker news, I you know, and like you said, we talk to clubs behind the scenes and stuff, but there's a lot of stuff they can't say. But the reason why I'd like to have, you know, kind of like what happened with that uh, schmuck, that meatball, Twitch, the club came out and gave a statement uh, to put that to rest. They got their side of the story out. But when the media is going like that stuff in Fayetteville right now and there ain't no pushback on it, now they're looking to influence jurors. And I think that's, you know, something clubs have to get ahead of especially after they see what happened to Freddie or what they did to Vagos on in Vegas. And now that they're running angel in uh, Fresno with that Rico trial, you got to get ahead of it because the jurors, they're trying to influence them. Yeah. You're really good at getting those interviews too, like getting people to like speak out. It's, it's hard. Like I, there's so many, I know you all y'all go through it. Like people send you stuff and, and you want to touch on certain stuff, but then, but you're, I think you've done a good job. Like one thing I give you respect to, it's a tough position to be in, but a lot of exposing of like rats and cops and you've really mm. put light to a lot. Cause to be honest, in a lot of these clubs, they're infiltrated right now as we speak, you know, I was Holy thinking about shit. that dude, 
I was thinking about what that dude Finger said on that thing. He said in every major club that had any type of media attention, there are plants in the club. And I've oh, noticed, indeed. I think that those are the people that keep wars going. They get mm -hmm. deep into it and they rise yeah. up. Because who could go harder than a police officer that it's his job to be a club member while the club uh -huh. member is working, doing whatever he, he's he's going even harder, you know? So you man, right. trapping like people that. and uh, and then the minute that there's talk about peace and and let's chill and unite with these guys, then boom, they're the ones that set it off again. Yeah. Mm. And then well, that you you brought up a good point. So, so what do you think about an ex cop? And uh, you know, I knew when he did it because I was around that time. Uh, we knew exactly who he was. He took down one of the, you know, uh, we're not going to get into that part, but uh, what do you think about an ex cop and undercover coming out? And trying to teach people how to, you know, do motorcycle club stuff. I just, I feel like you were never in it for the right intentions. So what no. are you really going to tell us? You know, you was in there to, to just, to destroy everything and bring it down. So what could you really <clears throat> tell us about being a brother? You know, he reached out to me too, but what do I look like? You know, having a conversation with a with a, <laughs> with a dad, you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. nah, I get killed. Going the people that are like, "Yo, I love your show," will be the same ones that snipe me as soon as they <laughs> see me. <out> of the <laughs> <event>. <laughs> right. That's the largest. Yeah. The largest criminal organization is the government, and then you have a you know, uh -huh. like whatever their detailed definition of an organized crime. You know, all in unison, wearing the same insignias, colors, everything. I mean, they they just write the definitions about themselves. And just like a, back in the day, anytime anyone, if anyone disrupts what they're trying to do, like you think, like let's say uh, for drugs, you really think the drug enforcement would ever stop drugs? And no, it keeps the funding coming too. They yeah. keep feeding it in there. They keep feeding the streets. Same thing with anything else they do. This is why I've been saying, like, on my channel, and I'm trying not to get Hollywood banned, but um, that 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 team out there that burns buildings down in Seattle, they have different states where they have burned cities to the ground, and there is no Rico on them. But there's Ricos on uh -huh. these clubs that they've been infiltrated for two years, and the worst thing they could say is, like, you know, they caught people with, like, they. this is the thing. They'll say, like, 30 guns they put some cuts there and it's like they got it from like so many different people like it's personal straps i know people that have 30 yeah. straps <laughs> just there come to, the person, come to texas you know I mean? man come to texas and every house is going to have 30 more than 30 freaking guns yeah well so he probably really yeah. on he, brings up a damn, he, he brings up a damn good point when Minnesota, you know, flew off, they were blaming the 81 for starting that, that, that auto zone deal. Yeah. So he's point on with that. Now, one thing I do like about what your movement's doing is you do target the independence more, I believe, than, you know, the club stuff with your time to unite stuff. Because if you bring the independence into the game, you start building the movement and the numbers and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and, and then also the and like you said, most out of the percentage that go into MCs, all were independents. A lot of them. Yeah. So I mean, well, if they can come up with that mindset into an MC, uh, if it can be a little contagious, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You guys got questions? You can put them in the community chat right now. We got the uh, sos. Uh, the ghost and pound ghost and man, everybody knows about that. Uh, we'll have Mike later on in the show talking about Mike and how him and Sos got together. Uh, it's a real cool story right there. Uh, but go ahead, Wild On too. I know you got some questions. Who for me about um shit. movement? Because some people okay. are gonna I'm just here. Like, oh, screws it up. <laughs> well. A lot of people are going to look at the patch and might say, hey, is he trying to – I'm just playing devil's advocate a little bit, right? Is he trying to just sell things to for his business, or is he really trying to make a movement? And uh, what other steps would he try to do? Your mic went off. Your mic went off. Go ahead. Uh, so <laughs> I'll put this out to you until he gets back up. Uh, Hawk43 says – 
what is y'all's opinion on clubs dropping the territory patch and just putting uh, the year established and getting back to the basics of brotherhood, riding, and partying? They would never do it. No, they would never do it, man. And and really, yeah. I mean, why should they? You know, uh, they they earned that. You know, my thing with the peace on the streets thing is, like I was saying earlier, you know, we're not going to have un unity, like true unity. But peace on the streets means everybody just stop with this fighting over territory. Like, you know, like Go said earlier, you know, it, you might have one or two brothers in a chapter you know, that's involved in some stuff. But when I was in the club, when he was in the club, when any of us have been in a club, we were never involved in like heisting a, a bank truck and all that stuff that we see on TV. Right. Yeah. And, and when you think about it, it's like, okay, so ain't nobody making any moves. Ain't nobody selling women. Ain't nobody selling drugs. Ain't nobody running guns no more. So what the hell are you fighting for besides your ego trip? I just want. I mean, to say that's all it too. really is at the end of the day. I want to say something too because Twitchy Fingers is, he's saying, but clubbers have special powers and indies don't, and that's it. That's that's division talk. Like this isn't an yeah. anti club movement. This is this is not that. So you saying no. that it just is more further divide. You know what I'm saying? Like this is that's not what this yeah, is. And about. that's and that's the problem. We got people with those kind of attitudes yeah. that that don't get the whole idea of it you know well, what that, i mean i mean yeah. you're 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 fighting you want to fight and you want to argue over nothing nobody's running anything nobody really legally owns anything so what's the point well my you thing, know if there ain't money involved then why are you fighting hey mikey uh, can it. you put uh the link to the patches on the community chat i can't do it right now can you guys hear me i'm now? gonna be buying one so you guys better be buying them i hate you now Go ahead. Yeah, no. Um, one of the well, one of the things you guys were just talking about that that's the one of the main problems. People have ideas that somehow they heard and they believe, just like back in the day with racism, with different races, what people believe because that's what was told to them. If you ask them where do you hear that, they'll say, "Well, from someone." It's not from what they learned or seen. Uh, same thing as I say, like clubs have more power, but powers and numbers is like you'd be you'd be really surprised. But for yeah. so, I just want to throw this out there, devil's advocate, I guess, because I saw some someone posting something, but hopefully they got stopped. Uh, nothing big. Just uh, for your patches in general, because uh, some people may say, is he just doing a ploy? Obviously, you know, merch and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But what is one of the, I know we talk about movements, but what is one thing that you really want to accomplish? Are you going to try to do an event or something that would actually try to bring people together? Well, what I'm trying to do first is raise awareness and then like that's I want to get into like me and D'Lo have talked a lot. Me, me and Hollywood need to chop it up some more, like build this awareness first and then turn it into something real, like not just a not just like a, a slogan or something we say, oh, like something it, on right. the ground, like something real, you know, and, and I'm right. saying like I want it to be like something where I don't want to be the leader or nothing like that. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I want to do is like create something where we all have a voice. And, you know, I know some leaders will emerge, but I don't want it to be a political thing. So that's why it's just it's more of an idea right now. And it's and it's something that I want to see come to fruition. But I don't have all the answers to be, you know, to be honest. You know what I mean? But I, I just want to create something where right. maybe we get a little snowball and then maybe you come up with the idea or something, you know, like, yo, why don't we do this? And then it takes off, you know? Well, that's why I asked that question, just because I uh -huh. kind of fig I figured that's where you're coming from. And I wanted people to actually hear you say that I'm not yeah. the one trying to get the, you know, the, yeah. the leader role or anything. I actually was kind of playing that. Hopefully that you would say that. You, I'm going to um, say something. I'm going to say something that I've never said on the air before. Even when I was in a club, the only time I would do I would do sergeant of arms because the president would be like, yo, bro, I need you to do this because I need you to hold me down. I need somebody I trust. But I'm not a person that wants to be president, wants to be the leader of something. I want to do my Demons Road thing and have fun and do some creative stuff. I don't want to be a leader as far as, like, everybody do what I say. I'm the president and all that. Like, I think people that do that is corny, personally. You know what I mean? So mm. I want this to be more of a thing where we just all have, like, it's just so ground level that, like, 
You know who's a good for instance? I don't know. You might know him while um do you know um the cartel baggers? Yes. So I seen them in Florida. Yeah, I know all that. They're not in the club. They were as deep, they were as deep as some of the clubs. And they're just is it's girls there, it's guys, they're chilling, they got the dopest bikes. You know what I mean? And they're just going to have a good time. Awesome but event, everybody dude. doesn't have to be, you know, have the money to have the most tricked out bike and what I'm talking about. But I want something like that where people have a good time and, and do events and stuff, you know? Mm. Well, one thing that mm -hmm. disappointed me was after Twin Peaks, the first year was a big year. And if you guys don't know what happened at Twin Peaks, uh, you really got to get into it. Don't go to the media stuff. Uh, I talked about Popeye and OG. Every year on the anniversary, they would protest on the courthouse steps uh, because the trials were still going. And remind you, they rested over uh, 200 people, I think it was. Only one went to trial, beat that one on a hung jury. But the first year, it was uh -huh. a pretty big turnout for unification. But after that, it kind of went by the wayside. And... Mm -hmm. I remember when Sos was bringing up uh, maybe a million biker type of gathering, and then yeah. you'd sit back and say, well, are they going to show up? Because they didn't show up when we were needed down in Texas, and that's where the unity with, I think, hitting the independence is going to go really good, is we got to show up, people. We got to yeah. show up and stand together. You know what? And, and Twin Peaks is really case in point of how scared – our government is of all of us getting together because a bunch of us got together that day. And what happened? You know, it was a Turkey shoot Four uh, four uh, people got shot up by the cops with AR 15s. Like it was in a shooting gallery. That's why I think yep. that it has to be a little bit craftier. And I'll just bring up a, for instance, yeah. like what happened in Canada, right? They canceled all the GoFundMe money that got sent to the, to the truckers out there. If we're all together, GoFundMe is done. The word is out. Nobody. Yep. So they go out of business. You know what I mean? If we're really on the same yep. page, hundreds of thousands of bikers, we're controlling a uh. lot of stuff, bro. Like we could yeah, put a company yeah. out yep. of business. People really underestimate themselves. That's the problem. They think, yeah. um, yeah. Well, my, 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 so, my sole voice is not going to make a change. But when you start, if you go, it's like Domino's effect. It's collective. It's a collective thing. And I know I saw some people posting on the comment section, of course, no pat, no patches, no politics, but we don't want to go the route that Australia is going. We don't want to go the route that's something that you can't even wear a patch. Yeah. Even the patch that Sosa's wearing, that like that won't even be allowed. It's, don't get me wrong. I understand mm -hmm. that. If we go all to the same club, all wearing different, normally we wear different colors, come in the club with no colors, we all get along great. Colors yeah. do change the way people perceive each other by previous notions of stories we sometimes don't even know about. Um, so it's pretty funny that, I mean... I would hope that we don't get to that route, but if people think that would not happen in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it could happen. They've been trying it for years. Yeah. Well, it's one thing, getting closer and closer. Sos, Sos was yeah, really that, behind, that's a scary uh, part. Yeah. The truckers, uh, and that's you know what? That's a perfect example uh, when you were covering the truckers up in Canada. How many stuck together? And oh, then yeah. when the American truckers, you know, yeah, there's you know a little bit, but it just talks it tells you about our culture is why couldn't uh -huh. we match what canada was doing as a movement you know you yeah. know more about the trucker stuff than i do so, so where why didn't americans get behind a cause like that i think i think that the like what i was saying before us doing like shutdowns of companies and stuff like that is stronger i'm tired of the you know, like, cause I, I went to the Million MAGA March. Like a lot of people get mad at me about stuff like that, but I really don't care. My beliefs are my beliefs. So when like the truckers all going to DC and honking their horns and stuff, I feel like it's kind of like, please allow me to have my rights. And I think bikers are more like, we're going to live on our terms. I think that's, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to yeah. say it in a way where I don't get like feds on me, but it's, it's, I want it to be more of a movement where it's like, we know you said that, but we have people too, and we're not going to bow down to you. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to do, we're going to, like, the rights that were given to us, God-given rights. We're going to exercise them. 
you can't tell us that we're going to stay home. And that's one thing I could say. Bikers were outside yeah. and everybody else wasn't, but we can expand on that. Right. <laughs> A couple of I used to tell everybody when, when we're all in the shutdowns and everything, I'm like, really, my life hasn't changed much. You know, I get on my bike, I ride. I don't really go to bars much. I'm not a bar guy. I'm not a drinker. So my life didn't change a whole lot, you well, know, except for work. That was about it. Well, that, well you, you said work, though, Danny, which is a big thing that in Canada. That's what people in the U.S. sometimes get scared, I think. U.S. is known for, I mean, for, we work so much more than, we're at work more than at home, right? So... People are scared, uh -huh. and sometimes that selfishness kicks in about making my money, you know, paying my bills, and sometimes putting just a little – use that fear and use it for their good and actually, like, say – that's what people get scared. Same thing of a job. If everybody quits at the same time, trust me, everybody will get raises and stuff, but if one, yep, one, one person exactly. says it doesn't agree about quitting, then you're screwed because uh -huh. then they're going to have people stay in work. Yeah. But that's like, that's, that's the that's fear true. that uh, that's the fear that our government has put into us Guaranteed. as you know Americans. What? You know, it's our society's weak the, that way. Not to get away from the conversation, guy. I'll address you, Twitchy, real quick. Uh, avoiding the fact you all spread division. You know what? That was back and forth, the schoolyard crap off of freaking BS division. I can, I'm not, I'm going to try to stay calm guys. Uh, the important fact is everybody came back together. Everybody can have disagreements, but at the same time you come together, get over those disagreements and you move forward. Was the vision spread between channels? Yeah. But now everybody's back to the same deal where we're trying to push something good out. Well, only human, this man. is the, this is human, the whole man. point of the show, Twitchy, is that, yeah, we, we were once divided and then we came together and said, this is, that's enough. It's stupid. And now here we are all together, which is what we're trying to prove to you people. And on the other side of it, that's what I'm trying to prove with the club stuff. If we can do it, you can do it. Everybody can do it. And, and, you just got to <laughs> stand up and say, it's time to do it. It sounds like Rocky. And you're being men at that. That's what men do. We make mistakes and then we try exactly. to learn from it. So at the end of the day, everybody here yep. is like saying what they did wrong and, and trying to fix it. Like nobody's perfect. We're not perfect. Yeah. We're all no trying one's to perfect. figure it out. Yep. You know? Pride yep. aside. I mean, that's and you know what? Thing. After this show, just because we're all on here to, you know, just because we're on here with Sos and, and we're all getting along and we're all cool. It doesn't mean that we're all going to hold hands and agree on everything that we all talk about. We're still men and it is what it is. But you know what? We can do it respectfully. We can respect yeah. each other's channels. We can respect each other as men. And we can admit when we're wrong and when we're right. Simple as that. One of the biggest yeah. things was I came from a different generation. I came where I learned everything from. That dude got my blood <laughs> pumping. <laughs> yeah, right. I learned from Vietnam veterans where it was a different mental attitude. And I couldn't see where sauce was coming from because of that generational gap and mm -hmm. it taught me a lot over the last couple weeks month whatever well wait a second you're now the older guy these guys think different just like you gave hell to the generation that taught you mm -hmm. times change we can't be stuck in the days where you know it was always, yeah, you know, we're never going to get along because we used to be bringing up, well, what about our brothers that got shot up and stuff like that, got into prison? Would we <clears throat> disrespect that stuff where the younger guys are saying, you know what? I didn't even know in the 1970s the two big clubs got into it over abroad over stupid crap, but <laughs> that led to people getting killed and that led <clears throat> to the bad blood where it is possible to come together. So was there a division? I'd have to say mostly on my part. I'm not going to lie. I'll fess up. It was mostly because I didn't see where he was coming from because I was stuck in my old ways. I was stuck in a mentality of, okay, this is the way we did it. That's the way it happens. And I was living through a different time period than it is now. That's always been like the biggest, dumbest most idiotic 
part of of what people say too from the old school days like well you know you don't know how many of my brothers were killed so that means let's continue this this idiotic behavior and keep killing each other and losing more good brothers that are alive right now you know what i'm saying i mean I I you know doing the same right thing there. and expecting a different consequence is insanity so, you know right. well then i stepped back and i said well wait a second he's actually wanting to do this this ain't a gimmick this ain't you know a marketing employee this ain't for money he actually wants it to happen yeah and that's what really changed right. my i actually, want, I actually want a creator up. fight nice that's what i wanted a what the creator, a what? The you gotta creator step my mic game up bro <laughs> Man, nah, nobody it is. Far away from, all I think days. You're far away from the mic, does and I, camera I holder. That, uh, we're gonna we're all gonna chip in and buy you a camera holder. You, you should. <laughs> the, you should. Now I'll say I was really gearing for creator fight night. That's what I was wanting to do. Uh, and I, you know, yeah, but then you'd be all crying and whining know. when you got beat up. Creator fight. Hey, night. that's what the you whole mean, point, like, man. But I'll get a hug from you though, at least. <laughs> what do you mean, like? A, I, you mean like I get to get my hands on Twitch type deal, like that? Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm down for that, bro. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I go if someone has a problem, man, we just get in the ring, like, uh, you know, street beefs. Nah. Oh yeah, yeah, like that dude, Mighty Mouse. Yeah, no. Yeah, Mighty Mouse. Yeah. So yeah, a lot yeah. of the, so a lot of that stuff came from <laughs> just you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. Where. Yeah. Sos and guys like Danny <laughs> Bilo, uh Carlos, they're the future. And it's time, I'd have to say, the old guys just back off and let them do their thing because we did ours. God, I hope our future don't depend on Wild on Twos. I really don't. Damn right you don't. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but, but it doesn't have to be like that. We, we can work together and bring each other up. You know well, that's I'm the saying? whole thing, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Everybody has their strengths yeah. and weaknesses, and use everybody's individual strength to actually help each other up and get better. That's it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you did that one video where you were talking about the need, where the older guys they're always uh, bitching and moaning about the younger guys, but the older guys didn't take the time to teach. I, yeah. I remember that video while you were uh, running around. Thanks for that, uh, Gio. <laughs> Uh, on the bike and stuff, and it really made a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah of course. A lot, a lot of times, people, even the even the new generation, sometimes they don't want to hear it. And there's sometimes really great uh -huh. advice, great advice that they could get, but they don't want to open their ears. Just like a lot of the old school don't want to open their eyes of the change that's coming. Yeah, um, right. I'm, I mean, that, that if you see the way the world has changed in general, you're telling me guys back in the day wouldn't love cell phones like the way they do now. These guys are 70 years old and they live off their cell phones now. If they had the yeah. technology that we do today, they'll be doing the same. They'll be doing the same thing. And yeah. uh, so, and you always hear them. Hey, say don't that. get me wrong. I'm glad there wasn't cell phones in the 90s. By the way. Oh my God, um, I'll be yeah. <laughs> these that. kids don't even. We, know we, none people. of us would be here. <laughs> yeah, we all be. No, you yeah, guys wouldn't know what time, a freaking beeper and a quarter was. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have, oh, me? We used to have tokens oh, to get on the Should I have beepers? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, beeper. tell me about Mike, uh, Sos, before I br bring him in and stuff like that. He went through uh, a real hard period, uh, and he's actually an inspiration you guys get to meet them and stuff on how to overcome a real bad situation. Yeah, Mike Mike is a is a brother to me. We came real close like it was weird like we started getting cool right before he had the accident and then he we were live and this fool loses his leg. He's on he's on the bed just had his leg taken off and he's live with us. Like he's like, "Yeah, I just lost my leg." I'm like, "What?" So everybody <laughs> showed him so much love that it just really helped him at a rough time, you know? And it's crazy that he was even like on his cell phone, really just lost his leg. And this fool gets on a bike in like two months. And it's not an exaggeration. He really got on it in two months. I, when I had, I had, I had a wreck, like maybe like four years ago and I had two surgeries, my elbow and my shoulder. I was out for longer on the elbow than he was on his leg, losing his entire leg. He's he's a maniac. Man, I'd have been, been on three. 
I'd have been on. <laughs> With bubble wrap. Three, you know, like, <laughs> I well, you guys get your questions well. ready and stuff like that uh, for Sosa. And uh, we're going to bring in Mikey right now. Or Mike. You know what? The younger guys always go, what? Mike Ball. <laughs> There you are. What's up, Mike? How you doing, man? What's good, Mike? Appreciate you guys. So tell us about uh, how you met Sos and uh, your accident and how you you know, persevered uh, getting through that hard time in your life, man. You know, it, it, was, it was all really a trip, man. And this is a total, it could be written in a book now. You know, it's, it's, it's a fairy tale now. But I went through a traumatic time, obviously. I lost my leg, and, and like So said, I, he was live that Sunday, and uh, I happened to call in, you know, after I got, uh, when I woke up from my forced intubation, I was able to call in and be like, hey, bro, you know, like, I, I just want to let you know that I just lost my leg, you know what I mean? And But I'm, I'm still in high spirits. We're going to get back on the bike, and we're doing this shit. And that's when... You know, so to me, really started getting a, a real connection, you know, and we, we were able to talk on the phone a lot and on private, you know, and we just became like, like instant, you know, and so mm -hmm. it was like, I had to have him in SoCal, like he was doing so well on his show. I was like, you deserve, you need to be in SoCal. This is where all the action's at. Like, I'm going to show you. And, uh. He sure did, man. When he showed up, it was fucking epic. We had parties, we had exclusives, VIP, everything, bro. It was it was the scene out of a movie, bro. We got swarmed by the clubs while we were driving from the airport just to go get something to eat. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was <laughs> That's right. Mm, it was crazy, bro. So how did your accident go down? And you know, I know you lost your leg, but at least you didn't, you know, lose the, something between your legs. That's even better for you. Absolutely. But <laughs> how did the accident go down? Well, uh, there was a person. I was I was just riding home. I was riding home with my previous club. I was riding with them, and I broke off from the pack, and I was only two blocks away from home, and. Uh, that's where it happened you know it's, it, they always say it happens close to home yeah uh, there's this lady mm -hmm. that was i she was drinking she came back from a bar you know what i mean and made an illegal left turn and literally t-boned you know did i need degree turn at 70 something miles per hour you know what i mean and this is a community you know what i mean like that you obviously floored the gas when you meant to break, you know? It was the total fuck situation. Sorry, excuse me. But, you know, she T-boned me right there, and then literally my leg was chopped off at the scene. And thank God there was a civilian. There's no one that walked out. There was a civilian mm. on the bike, and I flew past him. And, like, he felt the, like, the, the motion of me coming at him, and he felt it. And I went past him and I tumbled down and I was conscious and I was bleeding out. I, I saw my, my blood squirting out of my leg. I mean, it was, it was full on. Every time my heart pumped, it was, it was gnarly. And I mm -hmm. couldn't turn it myself because I had broken my scapula as well. So I couldn't even move my arms to even like take off my own belt to tourniquet myself. I couldn't, I couldn't move my arms. So luckily this guy that never, and never wears uh, a belt, happened to fucking wear a belt that day and save my life, you know? And that's why I really think that people should know how to, how to apply one, you know? It Rock saved my out, man. Yeah. But I mean... Thank God for that gentleman, too, man. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's, my, that's my angel right there. Shout out to... So him. How, is, yeah. uh, how did your relationship with Sos give you the moment you know what did he help you do to get back on track you know was it you all by yourself or did he help you say you know what this happened let's get through this it was it was more of like hey let's get to work you know what i mean like it i never skipped a beat like the moment it happened 
when it happened, I sat down. I said, if I live through this, I have to accept it now. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I did, you know, because when I woke up from that, that hospital bed, when I woke up from that forced coma, I was happy. I lived through it. I remembered everything, you know? So like I was, right. I, I, so if I lived through it, I was stoked. So to this day, I wake up every single day. I'm blessed, bro. Like I get another day to ride. And I mean, it, it sucks, but I even went down yesterday or the day before, sorry, Friday. I, I went down, unfortunately on the freeway, you know, and I got a little, got a little bit, you know, but it's all right. The bike is getting treated up right now at the big homie's house. And then, We'll be back mm. to ride in three, four days. And you know when he went through that, man, you got serious. such a pa you got such a positive attitude about that. It's crazy, man. God well, bless well, you, when, dude. When he, he went through that, he his spirits was up like that day when it happened. Like he got his leg chopped and his spirits yeah. was up. Like, like I'm just sitting here back exactly. thinking, like, man, if that happened to me, I, there's no way I couldn't be that positive. I, I know I couldn't. Like, I don't have. I don't know, man. That's crazy, man. But, but until you go through it yourself, I think you you even yeah. know how far you can go. You yeah. know, uh, I mean. Yeah, you you're I right. Would, you're right. I would that I would be able to overcome something like this previous in my previous life, right? Like, I mean, obviously, my life has dramatically changed since then, and we've, you know, that's something that you accept. And um, I don't right. Know, it's just a blessing to be alive and when you're when your heart and you're, you're actually grateful to be alive man you don't take advantage you, you, you take advantage of situations you 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 shouldn't be so arrogant to shut down opportunities so fast you know what i mean right well you you and, and you see the worth of time absolutely right? The worth of time. Yeah. A lot of, you could either, and he accepted the fact right away because they're not easy going to dwell in depression and waste time. We live on borrowed time. What we have, he knows what we have today can lead tomorrow. So that's the thing we got to be careful. Uh -huh. No, yep. you're 100% right. You know, and um, I'm just like, like I said, man, I, I went down yesterday and I'm glad that, I mean, people are like, damn, man, your bike is messed up, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I don't even care. Like I'm, if I literally can walk away from an accident, bro, like that's a win in my book. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? <laughs> how, did that, how did that further your relationship so with Mike, knowing he went through this and kind of, he was all into your message, uh, wanted to be a part of everything. How did that develop with you guys? I think Mike was like, Mike is like a, a a a brother from another lifetime. We clicked right away, so we just got close right away. So it it's it's just hard to explain. It was always love with him. Like it was, it's just very strange. But people sometimes people come in your life, you're like, oh shit, like you know. And that's mm -hmm. how me and him were. We were just yeah. real close, you know. But the thing about him is that, like, even when I was in Cali, there's a genuineness about him. Like he he wants to see you win. He wants to see you have a good time. He's everything. I notice like people's intentions are good sometimes, but what what the result of what they whatever whatever you like. I'm trying to think of a good for instance to break this down. Like, all right, I I really believe this. If somebody says they have your back to the fullest, and every time they do something, it seems to not work out. I believe that they don't have your best interests at heart. Mike is the type that will be like, yo, trust me. And it'll be some amazing shit. And you're like, what the? This kid is like a miracle kid. Like, <laughs> he just come up with shit. Yo, bro, right. the way he did my party, like, it was just like, yo, trust me, bro. Like, every time he says, yo, trust me, bro. And I got another brother like that, Dame. He, they, these two, they, they just, they'll bring up something and so much will come from it. And I noticed that, like, <laughs> if you really look into what happens with people around you, not what they say, but what happens, it says a lot about a person and it showed me you know, yeah. his character. You know, he's there's not a lot of people like him. You know, well, he's a special, he's a special person, you know. And that just shows yeah. in general about yeah. how, just like what we're talking about, even about unity and all that stuff. It takes one person to have a positive attitude and it actually spreads. Because I bet his yeah. attitude and his positivity probably made you better itself yeah. by just yeah. by meeting him. 
And then uh -huh. in, in essence, the more that just spreads and having positive, because he, if he was depressed and being like one sympathy and then everybody around him will feel that and the, it'll kind of react the same way. You're a hundred percent. I, I, I want to say something regarding that, you know, I mean, it's very true. I could have laid up, right. And it, been depressed, do that, that whole rabbit hole, right. I could have, and no one would have judged me. No one, people would have been like, yeah, I mean, like I would too, you know, some people would understand, like I would rightfully be able to do that. But guess what? You're going to lose everyone around you. You're going to lose everyone. You know what I mean? Yep. Because negativity, bro, is just, it's, it's a, it's a negative it's, thing. It's You're gonna, like the plague. So I don't know, man. It's just, just glad to be fucking here really and that's it's that's how it pma man positive mental attitude can just change your life you know and mm. i i learned it in the moment because i wasn't like that in my past you know before really this you know it this i feel like made me a better person yeah i lost a leg but i gained so much knowledge yeah i, I might have gained a, a bigger heart you know and it made me actually understand things i think i jumped a few years because mm. of, you know now but, you're going to be a part of a podcast with us so, so what kind of podcast you're going to be doing mike well uh, and where do you want it to go what do you guys got set up uh, as far as are you going to be doing commentary guest uh what can everybody look forward to yeah guys so it's road of the riches uh you find us pretty much everywhere um but we have we're gonna be launching here soon um it's it's gonna be incredible we're, we're we're able to actually speak freely on these podcasts and we're able to actually dive deep into, into subjects now when you when we bring guests on because of course we're gonna bring guests on um we're not really gonna interview them we're gonna you know what i mean like we're just gonna we're gonna vibe out with them you well know? just talk like you're saying hang out and like, talk yeah, like, yeah. We're yeah. On that topic it's like we want your thought process as well so that's how we grow so like a guest host almost like a yeah like a guest right. host almost you know yeah yeah and we'll get you guys that'll be on that'll be cool we'll get all you guys on it separately whole bunch of us like yeah I, but it's not gonna be i wanted to start mc and biker but go broader you know, I right. want to expand my right. horizon, you know? Yeah. Right. That's cool, man. Well, that's yeah, really that, cool. You know what? That's the best thing about uh, the podcast and radio, whatever you want to call it, is you're just not in that box of, okay, we got to talk about this club. We got to talk. Because after all, it, you know, it gets boring, yeah. actually. It you does. know, you want to get the more does. thought stuff. You don't want mm. you don't want to get stuck uh -huh. in that little niche like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why I try to put a little something different out there. Like, you know, when I talked about the depression and the, and being a biker and, and stuff like that, like, you know, you got, you got to put different vibes out there, man, because it does get boring. Just talking about MC, 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 MC. Right. Like, you know, I want to speak to everybody. I don't want to speak to just one person, you know, that's because yeah. you're looking for a girlfriend. That's true. No, <laughs> yeah. I ain't looking for none of that. <laughs> I ain't looking for none of that, ladies. No, he looks down. You. He looks down on the toes. That's the last time I'll say that. <laughs> oh god, are we ever gonna get over the fact hey, that I like girls? Hey, so, did feet? you ever Jeez. see? Uh, the, he has a toe fetish. A toe fetish? <laughs> he, Dan, I ain't got no toe, toe fetish. fetish. I look. So this is what happened, bro. On um, one of the shows, I said I like girls with pretty feet. And then this guy just went hog wild with it that, you know, now, now I'm some savage with feet and shit. Dude, like, we had a show it's kind of gotten a little feet. ridiculous, to be really honest. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> so when you, put, uh, when you put Sosa's party together, Mike, uh, what what was the thought process as far as, okay, I want it like this. I want it to happen like that. How much work went into it? It was a lot of, you know big homies that that shout out to them you know what i mean like i really believe that you are in exactly what those has taught me from another saying is that you are the surrounding of the top you are the average of the the five people you hang around for no good reason you know what i mean and those people are like my big homies and i happen to know and have this network that is 
fairly large and, and able to actually out to people and, and and these are genuine connections you know what i mean like these these are people that i have like either talked to or or we've done business or whatever you know what i mean so it's it's genuine connections it's not like we're out here just trying to make money it's not about that it's about it's about really brotherhood at the end of the day you know so mm -hmm. that's that's what you know I, I see a lot of people that that you know even negative shit like i just don't respond to it i don't give it any attention you know i i'm a i'm a big believer in upping everybody including yourself you should up everyone you know mm -hmm. um, i why drive right. you, you should be happy for the next person that succeeds absolutely you I, should why, if your brother's winning you're winning why, why wouldn't you want your fucking brother to win i just don't get it i don't help, mm -hmm. you know? Man, those are big facts right there. Big. That's facts. one of the things you always see that it's some, there are always people wanting you to to fail. It's just crazy. Yep. How have you dealt actually, with? Uh, how have you dealt so with the haters, man? Because I know we have them, man. I'm the most hated uh, content creator around. But how you I was, deal? I with just the I just text so something like that the other night, yeah. right? I don't really I don't really feed into it too much. Like, um, the like. It like the the other content creators making videos about me was kind of something that I had to get used to, you know, because they're calling me out, you know. And but um, you know, like the comments is a lot of people with very little testosterone in their body. They got very small nuts, so like, you know. <laughs> hiding behind that keyboard and shit. Yeah. Man. Talking all that stuff, but they see us on the street, and they're the same people that probably walk up to us like, "Hey, bro, how you doing, man, dude? I love your show." And it's like, man, I know some of these people that are the ones talking that stuff, man. You, right. you I don't know, man. You got to kind of feel sorry for people that like jump in the comments and always got something to say. Like, I don't know. It's just crazy. right. I couldn't imagine it, it is. just going on someone's live under a fake profile with like SpongeBob as my like. <laughs> <laughs> You got mental issues, right? Like, yeah, I don't promote that at all, man. I don't condone it one bit, man. I was at a party one night, and this dude walked up to me, and I could just tell, like, like I, 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 I know how Sos, like, he's real big on vibes, and I kind of am too. And the vibe of this dude just told me from Front Street that this dude is one of them haters. You know what I'm saying? And he walked up to me and he's like, oh man, you know, hey, you're Danny D'Lo, right? And I'm like, oh boy. I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? And he's like, yeah, I watch your stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. I appreciate you. You know, and I shook his hand. And then right away, he started talking about this, some off the wall, dumb stuff. And I just looked at him, bro, I put him in a headlock, man. I put, his, put my arm around him and like, Pulled him in close, and I'm like, I bet you you're one of those punks that like talking tough, ain't you? And he was just like, No, man, no, man, no, not at all. I'm like, Man, I already know you, man. I'm like, go uh, ahead, dude. <laughs> Mike, you got a question for Mark. Uh, do you have a prosthetic leg? You ride two wheels, side hack, or a three wheeler? I ride two wheels, two wheels forever. And hey, he ride too hard. <laughs> so here's Bro. my other shoe from the accident from today or Friday, I mean. A little bit of road, road rash, but yeah, there right is need to get you training wheels, man. I think, I think so. <laughs> you know what it is? Oh, man. So we need to bubble wrap him, man. <laughs> you know what it is, Mike? Once he he'll pull out of the like the driveway doing thirty. It's like, bro, <laughs> speed first. like I that's what you think your bike is jacked up. Like, you're getting doing thirty now. in a couple of seconds. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm, he I'm gets old. ghost right now. I'm, I'm, I'm old school on that. I I cruise. You gonna see me when I come by. Like, That's some lowrider stuff, right? Journey. Just cruise with one hand and chill it. Well, I think this question is gonna be for everybody, but we'll start off for think most of the haters that you're encountering encountering on your channels is supporters of clubs, and they actually cause a lot of problems that uh, go out onto the street where they're Shit, they cause more problems um i think it's more um somebody that's disgruntled that was maybe like i know from the past you know and it's something like that like they're like somebody that wasn't built like that but now they see me up there they throw a little dirt on my name or whatever say something like that i don't really think it's like support clubs I mean, of course, you got those people that like got. No, I'm talking about supporters. 
Oh, supporters of a club? Yeah, a supporter of your favorite club or something like that. They go out there, talk all kinds of crap. Because one thing that I did on my channel, I put it uh, <coughs> where I'm talking crap about other clubs. I'm deleting you. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't really get much of that, that, thank God. Yeah, I don't I don't like that when people just try to, like, talk bad about a club or whatever. Like, even y'all know, like, when everybody was going in on, like, Iron Order, I never said nothing about them. Because I, I really don't uh, know them, you know, so I didn't want to, like, I, I, that's one thing that I hold true to is, like, I don't want to put nobody down. Because you don't know, yeah. you don't know the club, so I don't want to put them down, you know. Yeah. But I know Hollywood has put people down for, you know, being exposed to be pedos and stuff like that so you know uh -huh. you know it, it'd be real stuff you know so I, I get it you know and i know a right. lot of people from you know hollywood's era is like if you're a rat i'm putting it out there like you know like yeah that's, that's my you know? uh, yeah. Yeah. uh question from uh robert uh danny uh yeah yeah i'll address bd in a minute uh question for danny i got I, what got you started on creating content for social media, YouTube? Really enjoy your all of your channels. That could go to Sos. That can go to uh, Wild On Two and Mike with the podcast. Well, I appreciate that for one. Um, you know, oddly enough, so I've always had this fear of dying. All right, I'm gonna keep it real. All right, I always had, and it's not that. Like, I'm scared to die. It's just, for some reason, I've always had this fear of, like, dying of some horrible disease. Like, it's always been weird that way since I was a little kid. And I've always just, in my mind, I've always been like, man, I just I, I just wish I could live forever. But, you know, realistically, that ain't going to happen, right? And so it, I, I'm living on bonus time right now anyway, kind of like Mike Ball. So, I'm you on, know, I, I, I feel, about to <laughs> I, I feel I you, Ovi. I feel you. Ali would. I'm going to use the bathroom. So, all right, bud. Yeah. So, so um, that being said, you know, we don't get to live forever. So I wanted to start doing content to not only educate the MC community, but in educate independents to keep people from getting in trouble, getting into, you know, getting hurt. But I also, you know, wanted to talk to the young bucks out here to give them something, which I'm going to get into some more topics like this on my channel, some more videos where you know just telling kids to stay away from the gang life stay away from certain parts of life man and and, and just go another way with it but you know i wanted like kind of like what so said earlier i wanted my legacy to live forever because i can't so knowing that i can build up a huge channel hopefully someday hopefully someday i'll be at so to ghost level you know who knows right and and you know i just want to know that when i die that all of you are still going to be watching me, listening to my words, and and hopefully I'm still going to be continuing to help people a hundred years from now, and and knowing that is why is what keeps me going, is what keeps me fueled to to keep doing content, you know, knowing that my legacy will live forever, because I can't, you know, so that's that's kind of what got me to do it. They're going to all be like, who the hell were these people and what were they thinking? Uh, <laughs> what got you into wanting to do the podcast with Sosa and all that stuff? Well, man, I, you know, it, there's more to it than just the podcast. You know, there's there's so much that, I don't know, like my, my whole get down on my platform is really to show people that your life isn't over, over uh, an injury. In disability or whatever, you know, you make it what you make it, you know, and right. that was my, that's my whole thing. Like I need to be bedside with these guys that when they're in question of like, am I going to be able to even live, let alone ride again? You know what I mean? I need to be, yeah. uh, I need to be talking to these people and uh, I'm like, Hey, like it's a, it's a whole mind. You know what I mean? It's it's ninety percent mental, right? You well, you know that's such a uh, huge that's such a huge thing too, Mike. That that's so awesome, been, dude. Been, it really uh, is, man. Been hosting them for a long time, so I'm gonna get some questions in before letting them go. Uh, I'll address this one forty two percent. Or how <laughs> does any organization who's been infiltrated so many times have any street cred? Well, the first thing I would say is maybe ask the outfit about that or the mafia is <laughs> called on a East Coast, see if they'd uh, 
think the same way if they didn't have any street cred. But clubs are clubs. They're not street gangs. And I've said that all the time, that they're not even on the same level as a street gang because they're not out there willingly trying to make money. This ain't, you guys got to remember, this ain't the 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s, man. They're not out there doing that anymore. You know, that was a different time period before, you know, all the technology and stuff. So, you know, when you ask, well, how many, you know, how does an organization that's been infiltrated so many times have any street cred? Go to some of the uh, hardcore outfits, man, and ask that. <laughs> Right. Hey Hollywood, I was gonna just say if I can just just answer the last thing because of what got me into like mine. I'm a little different. I'm more of a motor blogger, right? I ride a motorcycle and just rant. And uh, what got me doing that is here in Texas. I, you know, we get stopped so many times, and uh, other things happen with the police. And uh, so I actually put cameras because something an event that happened with me uh, that didn't go so well with the the police that I put cameras on purpose to show what I was really, you know, up to in regards catching them on their act. Um, but then I also ranted a lot in general. So then it came to there, but mine was more an accident. And I don't really care in regards toward obviously Hollywood to kind of know, I don't do this full time or anything. This is not, you know, uh, these guys put their heart, you know, everything they have into it. I have other, I have a business I started and I do have things outside of here. I, this is more for like my enjoyment, but there, I love putting out thoughts out you know, to help others in general. Um, so it's awesome to see how these guys put their time in, but mine is more of the profiling happening in Texas in general and how fast it's spreading across the country. And, uh, and the more rights are getting stripped, stripped away more and more every day. So that, that's what got me into, uh, the motor blogging, but that's a whole different, whole different ballgame. I don't know how we've allowed that to even happen. You know, all the BS in Texas, I don't mm -hmm. even know how that to happen as a community. Uh, right. Well, I'll address the uh, elephant in the room. Uh, a lot of people been asking if all the beefs with uh, BD are gonna, you know, try to get uh, put behind you, Sos or Mike. I don't. I don't. That was just the. I don't. Overall. I don't have no hate towards that man at all. A lot of a, a lot of people have reached out on that end, and they think I got hate towards him. I got zero hate towards that man. I don't know him. I don't, I don't even know him. You know what I mean? Like, we, we really don't, we just don't focus on it, you know? I, so, there's been times where people have said that, like, I was referring to him, and I've said openly on the channel, like, I'm not talking about BD. And still, you know, it, I, I guess it was competitive, and then it got worse, you know? And then it became, yeah, like, personal, way worse. I don't have no ill intentions no. towards him at all. Right. That's the honest truth. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm on the phone with Sos all the time. And of course that topic has come up before. Dude has no hate for that man. You know? mm -hmm. and, right. And, and just like most of us, right? When you're if everybody's negative around you, you fall right into that negativity and catch yourself Absolutely. even even talking shit or something like that. Then you take a step back like like so said, I don't even know him. You know, how can I judge someone without knowing them? If they knew me, they'll probably change their perception of me. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that yeah. happened to me in Hollywood, <laughs> didn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that it did, man. He didn't know. Negative, negative attracts negativity, I guess. Right. <laughs> uh, but I think it was a real good show, man. I'm really looking forward yeah. to the podcast. Uh, seeing well, you guys yeah, I definitely want to check that out. Yeah, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be well, guys guys have a lot more fun. It's righteous. That's the right word to say. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yep. It will be righteous for sure, man. I like the idea. Yep. We, we, hey, my ball, hey, Mike, where, where are you located? I'm in, uh, currently I'm in Anaheim, California. Anaheim. Southern. So. Behind communist <laughs> lines. I man, I gotta, I gotta yeah. bring myself down there, man. I, I see so many videos of, of the West Coast, man, and how y'all get down. And I'm just like, why, why? Why do I live where I live, bro? <laughs> like, yeah, no. no. I, I'm, I live yeah. in the wrong area, man. <laughs> we're gonna give uh, we're gonna give Sos the floor and let him go. Once go you look ahead. at the rent prices, though, you'd be like, "Yeah, I'm going back to." The <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna retire. Yeah, thirty five hundred for a studio fucking apartment. 
Once you go to the gas yeah. station, you're like, yo, I'm out of here. <laughs> I just <laughs> paid $60 <laughs> to I'm fill my bike up. I'm gone. <laughs> crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's like three grand for a two bed one. Time. So, somebody right here yeah. said, I saw a Souls to Go. She seems to have a problem with BLM. With, I always say this, like, listen, I'm from New York. I'm I'm cool with so many people that actually wear BLM shirts. What I say about BLM is about the organization, not the people on the ground level that are not even affiliated with it. But as an organization, I am against what they believe in because I don't believe in the separation. And that's a separation tactic. And you got to yeah. do your homework on something before you stand tall with it. There was a lot of hurt that was going on in the streets. Like I'm from New York. They were burning their own businesses. That doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. it, do it doesn't make sense. They did the same thing out here in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and I was actually down there, like like helping out as much as I could and stuff. And and yeah, see, to me, I'm I'm actually different. I think if you're wearing that shirt, you're kind of stupid. You didn't do your own educate. You didn't educate yourself. You didn't do your own homework. You know what I mean? Because now look at everything that's coming out into in, into the play now you know people are starting to see what that group was really about you know yeah. like like the original group and everything and it's like you know you guys could have made a difference if you did things the right way but you did like you said separation you you started right off the bat you're, you're trying to fight racism with right with, with, with being racist i mean yeah. come on you know what i'm saying blm was created. i always had a problem with it because i'm like they talk about police brutality and i'm like bro I'm from the west side of Chicago, dog. I I've been beat. I've been I've been locked up for for absolutely nothing but walking down the street looking Latino. Like, I, bro, I've been through it, man. And it's like, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you see what color my skin is, man. Like, what about me? <laughs> you know. BLM so, was yeah, created. I, I'm against it all completely. But BLM was created so that another Black Panther Party wasn't created. It's an infiltrated movement. That's my problem right. with BLM. It's not the people that believe in. Right. It's not saying that people that are black lives don't matter. They did that sneakily. It's right. the same thing with Make right. America Great Again. Why is it okay? To, why is it wrong to say Make America Great Again? Why is that wrong? You know, exactly. it's the same. Right. I, I don't know, man. People get mad at well, me for a Hollywood. Well, movie. there went I this show. Real, bro. I don't, I don't worry about <laughs> when you get into politics. There's always going to be someone. Uh, the funny thing is, that's the same people that will say, "Hey, I don't hate that. I, I can't hate someone I don't, I never met." But then, if you talk about politics, man, they'll hate you, and they don't even have to meet you. <laughs> yeah, that's. A, that's... Well, we're gonna turn Sometimes it over to go Sos. Over, yeah. We're gonna turn it over to Sos. Let him uh, get his final thoughts out and all that good stuff, and uh, then Mike and uh, all that because they've been on here for about two hours. They. Sos already went and uh, drained the lizard, so my. You know. <laughs> but go ahead, Sos. I ain't gonna lie, I'm starting to look at my no, bottle of water right now. Like, <laughs> I just want to say, like, through all the BS, every everybody has their faults. But you know what? Hollywood stood tall. At the end of the day, we sat at the table and said, "This doesn't make sense." So shout to him, shout to D'Lo because you know what? Me and D'Lo spoke, and he spoke to Hollywood. And you know, I should have picked up the phone and called Hollywood myself, but. These are the two people that I actually knew and actually spoke to. So the other people I didn't know, like in the situation, but I just, I want to give mad love to this channel and we're going to be doing more work and we're going to have our differences, you know, and it, we're not going to disrespect though, you know, and we have our own way of doing things, but I have a lot of ideas where we're going to come together and have fun. You know what I mean? And do some big things that everybody's channel is going to grow and our community is going to grow. So with that, I'll leave y'all much love. Rock on, man. That's Rock what's on. up. Mikey, you got to say something, man. You're on. No, I, I appreciate you guys for having uh, me on and, and us on. It's been, been a blessing all the way around. You know what I mean? Uh, going through basically hell and back. And, you know, it, it's been just a roller coaster, but. But we're still here, man, you know, and positive mental attitude, man. That's what I'm going to leave you guys with. You know what I mean? You guys can. That's how you change the world. Everyone asks that, that, that question, you know, how you change the world. I'm going to tell you how you change the world right now. The way you change the world is your world. And then it changes the people around you in their world. And then there's a trickle down effect. You've got to change yourself. That's the only thing that I'm going to the show with. I appreciate Rock you guys. Rock Much love, man. man.
Wild on Lots two convos, my crime partner. Well, I mean, it's everybody said in a nutshell, at the end of the day, in order to, you have to get to the core of everything. If you actually want to make change, you don't have to agree on everything. You're not going to be, it's not going to be a kumbaya. I don't care what we do. You're never going to unite everybody. The whole thing is just kind of work together and just be cordial about things. That's like the biggest thing to do. At the end of the day, one of the biggest things like the, in Hamlet, I guess it said the Grim Reaper said the day he was born, he started working every day, be, you, Every day since you were born is the day you start dying, right? So you got to live this life on borrowed time and make it worthwhile. Just like Mike uh, did, you got to take a positive thought and uh, just move forward. That's all you got to do. Rock on, man. Rock on. Danny. So I just want to say to both you, Mike, and Sos, thanks for being on. Um, you know, the whole point of me trying to help put this together and Hollywood put this together was to show to show unification, to show peace, at least on the YouTube streets, as we might call it, right? And, you know, my whole idea behind it was, is to show you guys that, you know what, we're all grown men, we can admit that we were wrong, and, and we can move forward together, separately, whatever, it doesn't matter, but, you know, we're going to we're gonna keep doing our thing, and now it's going to be on a positive note. And I just hope that some way, somehow, this reached many of you 1% brothers out here that, you know, are on the streets doing your thing and see that, you know what, I know a lot of y'all watch us. You can see creators come together. So, you know, why don't we try to work on getting you guys together and just have some peace on the streets, man. Quit this war, bro. And that's all I got to say to that. Much love and respect. Rock on, man. Uh, Sos is on every Friday at what is oh uh, your eastern time so i don't know that time what time are you on uh so <laughs> um i monday wednesday and uh friday i go live friday at 6 p.m eastern so that's five o'clock central then on the west coast you guys are still uh busting butt working <laughs> 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 Cool. Well, I appreciate having everybody on. Hopefully, uh, you know, everything uh, works out for everybody. Uh, we are on uh, every other week, right, uh, Carlos? That's every correct. other week. Every and, other week. Uh, of course, morning news, all that good stuff. But uh, I really had a good time doing this one. Uh, you, you guys can see how I've been changing as far as my platforms are concerned. Uh, taking in a lot of uh, suggestions from clubs and stuff, how to run the news as far as getting their side out. Uh, Sosa has been out there and uh, Danny's been out there. And I have to say Black Dragon's been out there trying to uh, push the good stuff. Uh, Cause let's be honest, when you're in news, it's all negativity, which, you know, I wish it wasn't. I wish people would stay out of the news. That way they put me out of business. But, you know, this is a good first step. Everybody coming together. And, again, nobody's going to agree all the time because of different generations. Uh, but the thing is to come to the table and understand, hey, things can be good, man, if we make it that way. And as Danny said, if YouTube creators can do it because we're a bunch of schoolgirls, so can clubs. But uh, anyway, guys, <laughs> thanks for uh, coming out. Don't forget to uh, check everybody's channel out and uh, leave some comments and stuff like that and uh, support everybody. And uh, I don't know if Mike was able to put out the patch uh, address in the link section, but I'll try to get it in there uh, and put it in the description if they don't uh, – Hit me as they usually do on this. Is demonsroll.com. Demonsroll.com is where you can get it. Uh, he has a store over there uh, to go ahead and uh, order your patch up, man. I know he was out for a little bit, but he's back in, aren't it? You're back in with the patches? Yeah, yeah. They're back in. Right. Um, yeah. um... All right, guys, we're out of here. They got to go. Hopefully, uh, they're going to get some uh, head or something like that from uh, their old ladies for, you know, being on this long and all that <laughs> stuff. We'll talk to I'm you. I'm going later. for a bike ride. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure worried. I, I'm starting to worry about you, Danny. You'd rather go on a bike ride than get I, I ain't going to get into it. <laughs> my, my bike ain't ever.